go. I'm retweeting it. Oh, boy. I can't hear any of this because I'm streaming right now, but um, this is going to be interesting. Let's see what's, what the fuck is going on. Let's see if I can get any clues here. Let's, let's tune into Chud real quick and see if we can figure out what the fuck is going on here. Bear with me. I don't know. This has been a, a, a ride. This has been a this has been a ride. Here we go. Let's watch. Let's watch together. Let's find out together what the fuck is happening. Oh, in that direction. No, of well, that's so. quite unfortunate, Chud, because the people who back your show don't agree uh, with how you're taking it. They they see they see the there's developing problems and wow viewership and what? and that retention is going well. I mean, I think we need to change. <laughs> But it's my it's my show. Like I can do whatever I want with it. I don't really know what you're talking about. Well, Chud, I I'm sorry to tell you that um, as of this morning and after a call I made with the people who, you know, run your show, you might be the manager, but you're no longer the owner. Uh oh, what? Wait, how does that work? It's my stream. I can that doesn't make any sense. Well. Let me put it simple. I've purchased what the, fuck? the Chud Knight podcast. <laughs> Wait. No way. That's impossible. What? Can you even do Look. that? What? Look. Call your backers. Call them. Call the people who sponsor your the show. Chud Stock Call backers. your little messy unions. Call, in Call the them Chud Stock. I bought them all out. I'm the majority stockbroker. You might own the majority of it. I think you own 48. Nuki owns one. But I technically own 51% of the Chud Knight podcast stock. Me, <laughs> I am the owner. You can be manager, oh, but I'm okay. the owner All right. of the Chud Knight podcast. Dari Cypher? Uh -oh. And you know what? It's a smart move on me. I see everybody in chat Wait, giving me props. Uh -oh. I see it. And I get it. I'm the runner of the best, you know, show on Twitch, the Hippie Dippy <laughs> Podcast. And me oh, cool. buying out the competition was a duh move when I saw the opportunity. You just made it easy for me. But don't worry, Chud. We're in the middle of a pandemic. I'm not going to put anybody out on the street. I'm not going to do that. I'm not a cold-hearted monster. I'm just going to make a few changes is all. Well, what sort of changes are we talking about? Well, number one, I, 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 I'm I, going to send you your new, uh, new profile picture. Because uh, I think yours is kind of outdated. That guy looks pretty old and white. Okay. I, we need to get with the times, you know? Wouldn't you agree he's pretty old oh, God. and also white? Oh, I've sent you the new Chud Chud Logic profile picture. Uh, I I think I think so we're losing the we're losing Chud. What do you think of that Chud profile picture? No more Chud. Wait, that's no fucking way. I'm using this. Are you kidding me? What do you mean? You know, it's it's progressive. What, what are you talking fuck? about, Chud? That's that's progressive. It's hip. That's hip, Chud. Or okay. Chud. I guess are you I, a trumple now? What the fuck? I guess are we I'm doing? just gonna have to throw it up on the screen for everyone to see. Yeah, um, of course you're gonna have to throw it up on screen. I mean, it's, <laughs> I think it's quite progressive. I mean, maybe maybe you're not no! progressive, Chud. Maybe you're, you're you're what they refer to as a sexist. But personally, I've never had that opinion of you, and I'm not gonna have a I'm not gonna have what? a sexist as my general manager. See, Chad, is this really that Fucking problematic? Hillary I like Chud. It. I think this would be a great new logo for the Chud Night podcast. Personally. Well, what if I don't want to do it? What happens then? Well, you know, then of course I can make Noopy general manager. <laughs> he owns one percent. And you know, Noopy, you know, that's this a lot is, easier. Wait, this is my joke. brand. I've built this myself. What well, business have you, you have, got coming you in here? You built it, but your main priority is to help the stockbrokers. What business do I have coming in here? My business. My business. Is somebody else on Twitch? Look. You know what? I got undermined by everybody. Prime Kai, Twitch <laughs> itself. They stopped my partnership. The U posters and chat. I saw it. I saw it all. And you know what? I decided I've been too nice. Wouldn't you agree? I've been too nice. <laughs> I've I mean... let people get by on bullshit. And I'm not going to let that happen anymore. I. This is no longer me coming here to just teach you foreign policy. This is a hostile takeover. And that's also no more, Mr. Nice going to relate to tonight's show. I know tonight you are going to be talking about what was it? Unionizing, unionizing your workplace, and teachers getting better oh, school they're changing supplies. The topics? Boring. Who cares? Not drama. Instead, I've got a different show in mind for you, Chud Logic. Okay, 
Hit me with it. Wait, then. maybe this doing? is what people were talking about. Oh. You were going to take your demon mama, right? You know, subpar debate person, whatever, against my hey, specialized you. picked team. We like to refer to as Drone Team Six. Wait, <laughs> what do you mean? You're you're now gonna you're basically gonna flood my fuck? show with your own guests, your own fucking liberals. Yeah, it's. I think six liberals versus one communist is pretty fair. No, that's not fair. That's just, Demon was going to get dogpiled. Well, what are you talking if about? If communism is the true way, if socialism is the true way, then I'm sure she can handle 6v1. <laughs> do I have any I say in this? Do I, do I have a choice? I mean, my chat isn't happy with you right now. They're not happy with me. Oh, boo hoo. The Chud Logic chat what isn't happy with me. Look, 43% of your community <laughs> makes up my community anyway. They okay, I guess I'm going 1v6. I make the good content and they know it. I, look, I'm bestowing upon <laughs> these, these Watch this. I'm going to turn these libs on one chat. another. These, these dunderheads in chat. I'm bestowing upon them wisdom provided by Raytheon the Clinton Foundation, our new sponsors. So we're actually, I don't oh see the problem. God. All right, I'm ready. Okay, I'm ready. Well, well, okay. Well, I, yeah, me it neither, sound like I've got much of a choice. It seems like my hands are pretty tied, to be honest. So I guess I'll just have to go along yes. with what you want yes, to do. Yes, general manager. General manager. Okay. You, you can, All right. I, I will. I will give you the job, Hold of general on. manager, and I'll I'll be here to monitor the first hour of tonight's show before I go off and do my own. But from now on, Chud Knight is sponsored by the Hippy Debbie podcast, but there's one last thing. Yeah. You know, I don't like we other got this podcasts shit. being on Twitch challenging mine. I don't like that, Chud Logic. Understandably, I want all the attention on mine. The Hippy Dippy podcast, right? Makes look, sense. I mean, look nice on the outside. Can I get a hell yeah? But I got a little yeah. bit. Let's play ball. I guess so. So, <laughs> even though this is a hostile takeover, I think, honestly, your show would make me more money if it no longer existed. So, after tonight, we're going to discuss completely shutting down. Yeah, this is good to be. Which is now, for tonight, renamed Lib Night, by the way. And getting rid of it. You can stream whatever you want, but we don't want competition on the block. Wait, so not only are you renaming my show, you're cancelling it too. Yes, I'm canceling the Lib How? Night podcast. You can't do that. I'm selling off his assets. We're getting rid of the cameramen. Lib We're Night. getting rid of the staffers. We're getting rid of the scheduling department. It's more profitable to me if it doesn't exist and I sell off the assets. I don't see the problem. Unless you feel like buying up more of the stock, which I'll sell to you at a fair price, of course. Well, how much are you talking about? Shut nights no more. Well, you know, just a I'm few I'm digging thousand. it. A few thousand, what, for the lot? Yeah, a few thousand stock, which translates roughly to, you know, 10k a pop. It's Apple stock. It's very valuable. Dylan Wait, I don't have that kind of money. Okay, look, I'm just going to have to accept this. I'm sorry, chat. My hands are tied, okay? Just tell me what I need to do. You're just going to run tonight's Holy show. Holy shit. And then after the show's over, you'll say your goodbye. You'll wave at chat. Bye-bye, Chud Night. Bye-bye, Lib Night Podcast. And it'll okay. be over. Oh, the Chud were... Night, the Lib Night Ro podcast will be absorbed Ro by Dylan Roasted. TV and it won't exist anymore. Roasted. And I will now own more of the panel show stock. Simple as that. Well, <laughs> let's just um, get on with it, I guess. I mean, what else can I do? Wonderful. So Wonderful. is everyone in the green room? Wait a second. Who are these fucking libs that you've got on the show tonight? Oh, don't worry. They'll be able to introduce themselves um, uh, accurately, I think. Okay, I'll start. All right, I'm in. Here we go. Um, I'm not happy about this. Here we go. But I just don't look. I don't feel I've got a choice. Aww. My hands are totally. T Mate, you're fucking like canceling my podcast. Do you understand how ridiculous this is? Do? This is so fucked. This right, is this is absolute that. bullshit. Uh, uh, this is actually very based. I this is extremely this, based. Dylan. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm sure I'm happy some can see my brilliance. Look, Noopy, okay? Third wheel. 
always been third wheel. Uh, I don't know. Look, you Dylan, fuck percent. you, okay? You want to fucking 1%. create a monopoly, right? Because you, you're fucking, you have no content, okay? No content. You can't stand the competition because you have no fucking content, all right? Oh, please. Oh, please. The j Look, I have, I have revolutionized the panel game, okay? I brought foreign policy to Twitch. I brought knowledge to Dunderheads. I brought foreign policy knowledge to people who knew nothing about it beforehand, Okay. All right, well, you know, when you're done sucking yourself off, we can uh, get on with this uh, stacked unfair debate, okay? By the way, Noopy, you're now appointed janitor, by the way. So <laughs> this, I'm just going to throw that out there. You're janitor now. And what I respect janitors, you know, they're an important part of the system. You're an important part of the workforce. Noopy. Well, I think you're going to need more than one janitor to clean up the, all this mess afterwards. <laughs> so right, you guys have really left Noopy. it unattended. Okay, right, hang on. I've got the topic list. Uh, all of them about like the American election and Biden. Are you fucking kidding me? Of course, me? of course. That's what's important. What do you want to do? Action. <laughs> Look, I don't care how many si signs you're gonna step out there and hold. That hasn't le led to anything. Okay. All it takes is a few Pinkertons and it's all over. Okay. I mean, like I say, my hands are tight, people. I'm sorry about this. I don't know what else to. What else to say? Okay. <laughs> well, well, let's uh, let's get started. I guess. Um. So, um, I guess we'll go around the panel. Everyone can give themselves an introduction. I just want to say, imagine it's like your first week here. You have like no idea what this podcast is, or this uh, panel well, is, if, and you're and if, you're just like walking into this bullshit. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, listen, listen. Right now, not, actually, it's it's they're not gonna fuck it. It's gonna be their only week, from the sounds of it. So, um, right, shadows. Do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah. So, um. I'm Shadows of Liberty. Um, I like to stream about economics and Let public me know if policy the audio levels are and fucked. talk about all that stuff. I recently debated Dylan, so you might know me as that guy who's against the JCPOA. You also might know me as the guy with the Israeli flag, or you just know me as Shadows. But either way, it is nice to meet you, and it's good to be here. Okay, cool. Uh, next up, uh, Polar's World. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Polar's World, and there's one thing that I care about. Profits. That's all I have to say. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> I like it. Diva Mama. Yeah, hey everyone. Uh, as it turns out, maybe I'm the only uh, leftist on this panel tonight at all. And, uh, you know, just gonna say, if you're looking to get some actual counter narratives to the stories going around, if you want an answer to what the fuck you do when Donald Trump says no to coronavirus release uh, r <laughs> relief, you wanna follow me. Come on over, Demon Mama Live at Twitch, and your Demon Mama on Twitter, and you'll get a lot of that. Okay. This is gonna be a day. Happening. I think your mic was cutting out or something. I was think it? your mic was cutting out, Demon Mama. I think it was cutting yeah. out a little was bit. My in there. Mic? I can try it again. Yeah. Uh, is this could... sabotage already, Dylan? It's just the introductions, oh, no, you know. No, you don't no, need to no, sabotage no, the introductions. I don't, I don't sabotage <clears throat> anything. I'm just making. I'm just making sure the field is fair. Wait, wait. Was it my mic? I mean, I can. I can easily redo this. It's all good. I can. I can redo my introduction. I'll do it a hundred times. Oh uh, no, 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 look, everybody. Everybody <laughs> gets only a certain amount of speaking time. You're not gonna hog it up just because there's one of you. Okay. Next person. Socialist uh, internet had me laugh. <laughs> um, uh, Dari, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, um, Dari Kohi on everything. Uh, I live in reality where I realize markets control all <laughs> geopolitical. Um... Hey, I think you're cutting out. We lost him. Well, yeah, we can't. Hear you. Look, yeah. see, the communists, the communists were angry <clears throat> that their person got cut off, and now they're working to sabotage. I was like, look, communists can't win fair. They can't. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Is that what's okay? Test. I'm being One, two, three. Are we good? Yeah. Yeah, we're not fucking with you. It genuinely wasn't working. Okay, sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, dairy, Cody. Just say dairy. It makes it much easier for everybody. Um, I like to do educational content uh, into philosophy. Uh, and it's economy. This is and all so lips. markets kind of rule our world. That's where reality is. Um, okay. And Splinters? Hey, I'm Splinters. Um, I do debate content and politics content, obviously. I'm happy to be representing the liberal hey, dream the tonight. Follow. I'm going to make fun of uh, anybody who's not a social democrat and uh, thinks that Biden isn't, you know, God's gift to the world. <sighs> okay. Um, 
And is there anyone else? I think that's oh, oh, me. Rage. Oh, yeah, go ahead, Rage Rope. Hi, uh, I'm Rage Pope. I play games and I talk about what's happening in the world. I run a podcast called Rage Against the Vaccine with my co-host Econ Greg, a PhD economist, where we talk about the coronavirus impact on the economy. But speaking of capitalism tonight, all of my opinions on this panel are up for sale. If you have a great opinion, and so should I, you can buy my opinion by donating subs and bits to my channel. Furthermore, I really, or I didn't really think that uh, Dylan was serious about this whole capitalism stuff until he pulled a serious union-busting move. He banned me from speaking about my compensation for being on this panel. Ooh. Damn, okay. Damn, sounds very capitalist. Can you explain that? Look, I, is it, look, 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 look at Demon Mama pulling the, oh my god, you can't criticize said system because you live in said system, just like that fucking four panel meme we see all the time, okay? True. Really, at the end of the day, she's, she's just a failed meme and she will display this tonight on this panel show when she's put under real pressure by American Patriots. Um, okay. So we've got the first topic then. So the first topic is... Oh, yeah, by the way, I'm the moderator. Oh, sorry, Noopy. Just I didn't in case I wasn't really touch it. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, okay. So the first topic, um, it's on the screen. Uh, it's on, on the, 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 the title. Should the Democratic Party be a place for Marxists or socialists or communists, I guess? Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw it over to Demon Mama first. Uh, do you want to give your take? And then I guess... We'll just go into an open panel because I'm presuming that all the libs are going to have the same opinion anyway. So, uh, Dima Wama, go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the answer to this question is, of course, yes. Um, we live in a two-party system uh, with a first-past-the-post electoral uh, system. So, um, as, as of right now, if you are anything left of um, more or less a fascist, then you don't have a home in the Republican Party, um, which means the Democratic Party is, uh, is for sure the place, uh, or a place, perhaps not the only place, but sure, certainly a place where some Marxists, socialists, communists, even anarchists may find a political home, a way to, uh, you know, change the, uh, shift the Overton window left as, you know, we have seen happen. Even um, the the highly praised Biden has been pulled left by the incredibly amazing ideas that the left has brought to this brought to the table this election cycle. Um, in fact, damn, it almost seems like this entire election has been a decision as to whether the country is going to break further right under Trump into denying COVID or break left into recognizing that there are systemic issues that we must fix if we want our society to succeed. So yes, Marxists, socialists, anarchists, all of you should find your place within the Democratic Party and pull it left. Oh, wow. Okay. 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 Um, so I'll throw... this wind bag. <clears throat> oh, sorry, I coughed. Okay, I'll throw it over, Tried! I guess, to the rest of the panel um, to, to have their say. What, what do you think about that? As much as it pains me to uh, agree with the opposition here, um, I think Demon Mama is at least partially right. But we should be clear that when we talk about these Marxists, socialists, communists, whatever, that sure, there's a place for them to left for now, but they are merely a means to an end, all right? Once we reach the liberal suck them utopia, well, they'll get their come up. I actually agree with splinters on this Damn, one. Damn, that um, sounds like some tangy think, rhetoric. Actually, let me bring it back to a point. Right here on my tie is the Statue of Liberty, okay? One of the most American things possible. This, fl this statue represents individual freedom and everything that makes America what it is. And to me, you know, if the Marxists, uh, the communists, the anarchists, if they want to hang around at the Democratic Party, I'm cool, okay? Don't bring any of that Marxist stuff to the party, though, okay? Support our health care plans. Don't mess with the legislation. And sure as hell, don't mess with our corporate donations. God damn it. Okay? That's what I care about, True. okay? True. I don't want any of these Marxists ruining what it means to be an American. Or what it means to serve the American people. Taking donations from Raytheon. That's what it means to serve the American people. Thank you. Uh, you know, I'm really going to have to disagree with everyone who's already gone. I think we should go back in time to a much better time in America. And that time <laughs> is March 21st, 1947, when President, Human er, President Harry Truman signed Executive Order 9835, which uh, said that uh, all civil service employees Yikes, should be screened for loyalty. The order said that one basis for determining disloyalty would be finding a membership in affiliation with or sympathetic association with any organization determined by the attorney general to be totalitarian, fascist, communist, or subversive. So not only should communists be banned from the Democratic Party, but we should ban them from America as well. <laughs> Bring back McCarthyism. Make America great again. <laughs> 
Okay, so I'm gonna go now. So you're actually all wrong. We should not ban the commies from America. That's fucking ridiculous. Okay, they're such a small minority that we don't need to care about it. And you know, to be fair, to add on to that, I guess you could say that you know because they're such a small minority of the voting population of people who want to participate in politics, that sure, maybe they should have a place in the Democratic Party. But I actually strongly disagree with this. I think that if you are to the left of social democracy, if you are actually a full on socialist, then no, you actually have zero place in the Democratic Party. I think if you do that, what's going to happen is you're going to have strain on both ends. You're going to have people who are moderate Democrats who want to vote Democrat because they understand dec- they're better whatever. on social policies this is a fun and whatnot. One. And, you know, they, you know, they're yeah, maybe keep, in the middle keep chat, on economics, chat open. so they're willing to listen to what they have to say on economics. But then they're going to see these far left people and be like, hmm, I'm not so sure about this. Maybe I should vote independent or maybe I should not be a registered Democrat. And these far left people are going to see these moderates and be like, wait, why are these people in my party? This is insane. Like, I don't want the I don't want to be associated with these people. They're too moderate and milquetoast and they promote the status quo. And so I think when you allow, the, when you have this huge tent that allows people who are even full on socialists, not social democrats, if you believe in social democracy, that's fine. I think you should, you he can didn't. qualify as a progressive Sorry, that can operate him. in the status quo. But if you're a full on socialist, no. And I think if you have all these different ideologies, this massive tent, What's going to happen is you're going to end up splitting the parties and you're going to have what you have in the UK, where you have a Lib Dem party and a Labour party. And maybe that's a good thing, but maybe it's not. So <laughs> it, de- it depends if you, if you want that or not. Maybe it's a good thing. Maybe it's not. Damn. I think that's everything. I guess we can go to the next topic. I'm sorry. One, I have to say one last thing. Okay. Let me, let me finish this one out. I'm sorry. Uh, Demon Mama. I know you want the socialism and, and the communism in, you know, in the political process, okay? Let me tell you something in chat, okay? If we let these people take over the party and let them have what they want, this will be your wallet, okay? They want all of it. They want all of it, goddamn! Okay, and we cannot know, let them do that. Uh, okay. So I'd just Look like to that. ask, when has communism done anything good for any country? The answer is never. So why should that be a part of our political system? Damn, it's a good one. You know, it's really funny. Um, it was funny that that you know, Polar's world had this 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 whole thing about liberty. You got the American flag up in the background. We got a whole lot of appeals to liberty. The only one who really came out with it was the one uh, was I can't remember which one of you said this, but uh, they're all kind of blurring together. But um, as far as whichever one of you admitted openly to McCarthyism, just kind of proves that although you like to call literally anyone with politics left of center um a tanky y'all are perfectly fine with rolling tanks over the over the civilian ship as long as you get to wrap it in an american flag that's what we've seen here True. as long as you as long <laughs> yeah i'm glad y'all at least at least y'all own up to it at least y'all own up to the fact that you'd loved you just love to find a, a nation overseas like i don't know like iraq or or you know some other country that you could hey, destabilize better than, than in our own citizens of, am i right oh yeah totally definitely yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, there's this thing that's been happening for the last mm, almost year now. This uh, historic civil rights movement that's been met with uh, unbelievable police brutality. It's almost like we do do it to our own citizens. And we actually use citizens of other countries as a practicing ground for that where we can also make some money on the side. Big thanks out to uh, for that sort of stuff for uh, companies like uh, what uh, Raytheon. Hey, I've, got a, I've got an idea. Yeah, yeah, if sure. If we took all the socialists and we had them sell their votes to Democrats, we could probably get rid of all the income inequality. What? If all the socialists sold okay, their votes dude. to Democrats to win the election, we could probably get rid of that income inequality here. I actually don't Because socialists saying. are rich? But that sounds like some... Uh, oh, they're poor. And so in order to get out of poverty, they could sell their vote and then make ends meet. Oh, oh right. The opposite. Oh, I yeah. see. I forgot all okay. poor people are, are, are socialists. I mean, I will agree that the uh, the message of, of socialism, the message of a more equitable and good society, a society that isn't run by a handful of random weird perverts who have a ton of money and can do basically whatever they want like have uh, nested yachts or 30 a fleet of 37 yachts you know i know that that does sell to a lot of people a lot of people in america who are currently um unemployed suffering from sickness like uh you know covid
stupid. But but yeah, I guess I guess you can just write it off and say, you know, poor people. Ha ha. That's you know, that's the typical lib fare that I've come to expect. Um, I would like to respond to what Demon Mama is talking about. All this slander, okay? You brought up BLM, okay? It's one Why is it time, Dango. that corporations like Starbucks and other fast food places, Twitch, they support BLM a lot more than these individual socialist organizations. Okay, secondly, here's the difference between your ideology and my ideology, okay? See what this is? This is a Harry Potter book. Fantasy, okay? Communism and socialism? Straight up fantasy, Okay. This Read is another liberal. book. A calculator. Look, look. A calculator, okay? That's what we'd be doing in the real world, okay? Go get a job, goddammit. Wait, wait, wait. Are you seriously, are you seriously reading Harry Potter in 2020? Demon Mama, I gotta, add, I gotta throw this out there. Yeah, sure, sure. I mean, it's I better than reading Starbucks, Marx. I saw Starbucks tweet out about BLM, and it got like uh, 20 or 50,000 likes. You tweeted about it and like got two. So... How can you say you're honestly doing more than them for the cause? True. I mean, you do bring up a great point. It's almost like if you have a pre-established social network and a whole bunch of money, you might be able to boost your tweet to a lot more people than somebody who doesn't. It's almost like you're highlighting the very inequality that I've talked about, that uh, – Starbucks. Well, maybe if the ideas were better, you could get more followers. Oh, true. Yeah, or, I know. You know, or, there's, there's somebody who wrote really a lot about that. He wrote like a lot of deep theory about the marketplace of ideas. His name was Dave Rubin. I think you'd find his ideas very enlightening. Dude, him, Steven Crowder, and Ben Shapiro are my three heroes. Wow, damn. I mean, whew. I can't. I can't tell you to go much higher than that. You, you should check out Nick Fuentes. He's uh, he's he's quite funny. Yeah, old booger Nick. Well, he like says uh, no gamer girls, and so I'm uh, kind of into that gamer girl oh, bathwater. So I can't really uh, follow uh, that. Uh, is that what, what did it for you, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I can't argue with this that. This is the title match. This is the one. Demon Mama, I wouldn't be so quick to sure, uh, sure. condemn uh, the the liberal foreign policy either, because when I saw what all these socialists were doing during the primary both in 2016 and as well as uh, this most recent Democratic primary as well, the candidate that they're supporting is Bernie Sanders, whose foreign policy can best be described as retrenchment, right? So we all criticized Donald Trump when he pulled out of Kurdistan and completely abandoned <laughs> our most effective and important allies in the region to their enemies to the north. But if we're being honest with ourselves, if the socialists were in power, they would have done the same damn thing. The fact is, when we talk about intervention in the world, sure, the libs mess up sometimes, but at the end of the day, we're the ones that are usually sticking it out there for humanitarian purposes. Oh yeah, totally. Um, but uh, there's a fun, there's this, there's this funny fact that you've over, over, uh, overlooked. Um, which is, uh, Bernie Sanders isn't a socialist. Bernie Sanders, in fact, is a, a, a. Then why wouldn't he Democrat. disavow? He was asked to disavow, and he wouldn't. Yeah. Oh, I see. Oh, apparently, so oh, when Trump I mean, doesn't disavow white supremacists, he's a white supremacist. But when he's asked if he's a socialist, one. he says he's okay. Yeah, you hey, got me on that one. Oh, socialists that one. and the KKK or the Proud Boys, same thing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, hey, true. I mean, that would make sense. Only that thing, would make sense in the brain of the thing the Democratic Party has ever gotten right, and that is better dead than red. It doesn't I'm matter. Sorry, what? Socialists, all that matters is that all the socialists supported him. Socialists are for foreign policy built, foreign policies built around retrenchment and trade built around protectionism. Two, <clears throat> two perspectives that have been empirically debunked like over and over again is ineffective and not really conducive to bettering the livelihood of anybody. Yeah, and yeah, I was I'm... actually about to add, you know, you seem to not be a huge fan of liberals demon mama but if you understood what liberalism meant in um, foreign policy you might actually have a different view of liberals because liberalism is actually essentially that it's retrenchment it's this idea that you know we can just have world peace yep. without us being a yep. military a power cast. so you know maybe you might be a liberal when it comes to foreign policy so i would say you I'll know hold off on hating and smack in on all the liberals you know, I would also say that Demon Mama, you talk about Bernie Sanders not being a socialist, but let me tell you one of his proposals. Okay? Sure, sure. Please tell Making me. Making sure that on all major corporate boards, half of the people on there are workers, okay, or worker elected. That's pretty fucking socialist to me, okay? Mm. That's what I'm saying, okay? You called Bernie not a socialist, but you know where he wants to take us? Straight to the goddamn gulag, okay? That's what'll turn this country Based. into a hellhole. Wait, so let me get this straight. I, I just want to make sure that I'm I'm understanding your your perspective here. Um 40% worker ownership in your mind is both socialism and the gulag. 
Um, so, you know, yeah, like basically the yeah. people who helped yeah. build a company, the people who put in the, the sweat and blood equity, um, are, you know, somehow, um, g gulagging you by saying that, Hey, we mm -hmm. should have some amount of say in the, the leadership of this, um, organization that we helped build. I mean, I guess that you were probably more for the sort of thing that we saw, you know, in the last financial crisis where people who've worked for a company for 30 years are terminated without benefits. That's the type of world that you think would be just for workers, right? That would be um, not actually, Gulag, right? That, whoa, 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 whoa. Right to, well, the right to work has uh, allowed a lot more people to get jobs because uh, companies can be less uh, stingy about their hiring practices, right? It reduces friction in the economy and allows people uh, and, and or the ability to uh, transit between jobs uh, with less friction. Actually, right to work laws at this point are basically just anti-union laws. Like I can understand why some states had them at first because of what was happening in public unions. But since Janus versus USMFC or whatever the fucking acronym is, if you just look up Janus space V in Google, you should see the ruling um, for it immediately that it should be the first pop up. But, um, you know, since that ruling, these have just basically become anti-union laws because there are workplaces that would decide, hey, we just want to have a, um, we just want to negotiate with a union and just the union. Because if you have a union in the workplace and you also have non-union members, what you have is an inefficient system because you have to deal with the union part of the workforce and people who want to negotiate independently. For a company, keep in mind most companies want to maximize profits, it's more efficient to just negotiate with a union. So they will create a policy and we can also incentivize this in law by giving them certain tax breaks if they choose to have a unionized workforce. This is how we can promote a more union heavy workspace is they will say, <laughs> but unions we're just are gonna negotiate. Uh, you're gonna let me finish, hold on. Um, so <laughs> you, you basically, um, you have this and they only negotiate with the union, oh, they're but fighting when each you other. have a state with Don't the right to work laws, like let's say Wisconsin, because I do believe Scott Walker implemented that. I'm not sure if the new Democratic governor has changed that. But if you want to, you know, work in a Ford plant in Wisconsin, you don't have to join the union which is just annoying to the company because they're like, hey, we just want to go negotiate with the union. But because of this dumbass right to work law, you're like, nah, I'd rather not negotiate with the union because my wife, she already has pretty good health care. And, you know, she already has enough sick leave. So, you know what? I don't I don't want those benefits. I'd rather negotiate on my own so I can just get. Yeah, I, I'd rather just uh, a corporation just uh, unfairly tax me without uh, any say because I want to work at a business. That seems like a fair thing to do. If you I don't want to join the union, you can work somewhere else. No, the oh, union can I'm go saying. fuck itself. Like, why yeah. should I be banned from uh, from a job because of my affiliation or lack thereof? Why should you tell a company who they can and can't negotiate with? If they want no, to only negotiate... No, the company requires it, then sure. But it's the unions that are requiring it. Requiring no, it. it's not. If, no, it's not. This is in the public sector. Can, can you name saying, me, can you name me one company that wants people to join the union? That Na wants name, me one, name, name me any company that wants workers to join a union rather than coming in under right to work. Ford and GM, because they'd rather just negotiate with the union. No, the, the, the pro tip, they don't want that. N no, they do. Because sure. only 5% of their minutes. cars are built here. So they're fine with unions. Now, you know, right. what this was uh, a great illustration of, in was uh, was something that you all, you, you, you lovely, lovely libs and sock dems who apparently don't like bernie could learn from which is a thing called solidarity and you see that's something leftists understand despite all of our infighting despite our disagreements on you on get dragged down forms. by the other people who can't negotiate for as good of a job as you can i'm sorry what, <laughs> I'm sorry, what? i said you get dragged down by all the others who can't negotiate as well as you for your pay wait a minute that's the opposite that's the opposite. Well, wait a minute i think um I think the amount of brings up a good point. I think there's a place in uh, democracy to support socialism. The thing is, every socialist I talk to has a whole different definition of socialism. What do I even back? Oh, really? Yeah. What, what sort of definitions of socialism has, have you encountered? Is it something like... Uh, um, anytime the government does anything, that's socialism. Yeah, that's what I thought. Our See, that government was does about. something, that's socialism. The more yeah, stuff the government does, the more socialism it is. Yeah, and I saw And when the government one. does a lot of stuff... That's communism. Can we get an amen in chat? Amen. We got Maoism, we got Trotskyism, we got Arnism, we got mutualism, we got collectivism, we got anarcho-carnism, we got syndicalism. I mean, we can go on. 
about that sounds like a lot of story. mental disorders that there isn't enough room in the dsm5 wow yeah, let's, let's, lips well, dipping into <laughs> ableism okay, okay, okay. what a surprise let's, 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 Whoa. Oh, color oh, me God. shocked let's, let's get around that one that aren't here. oh y'all I mean, covering yeah, up for your friend now demon mama, <laughs> demon mama wait, means aside because i'm yeah. genuinely curious right when sure, you talk sure, sure. about like worker control like in the workplace and whatnot yeah. like to what extent can you just like highlight for me a little bit oh, like yeah how I think... much control in industry do you want to give to workers oh like, i think workers should have complete control of the industries that they uh make happen absolutely um right now okay. the system that we have puts uh unaccountable people who have often have no idea about anything about the interest they're in in charge of them venture capital at, at the in the current moment of our history is a massive problem Co companies that have no idea a single drop about their industry and they hire out to other companies that sell themselves as perhaps having you know industry um uh, uh industry expertise and they're completely unable to do anything with that they just gut the company and run away and what this leaves is workers at an increasing uh wave of impoverished and jobless workers across our country that we've seen expand over the last 10 15 years and it's been going on and on and on for for much longer than that um but yeah um i think that if we were to move towards a system where workers were able to control the industries that they make happen where we cut out the middleman this this idea of an unaccountable owner who you owe a piece of all of your labor to we would have a much more just system and in fact um the people who would take the place of the of the owners would be people who are experts in that industry who'd be able to lead it better and take care of our society better of course can i ask some questions so we that? should let uh sure. private uh, equity uh, owners run all the business then because they have the most expertise and know how to run mm -hmm. businesses the best then. Right, but that's not true i will also that's, add that's on uh, demon mama there are there are a lot of issues with what you said. I've heard some very concerning things. Oh, sure. You talked please, about the 2000 economy. Concerned. Um, that actually had to do with government regulation into the markets, okay? What you're describing is corporatism, not capitalism, one. Two, you talk <laughs> oh. about <clears throat> this aspect of workers owning the firms or whatever. Well, wait, 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 How do you well, respond well, to question, the fact question, that these workers... Whoa, 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 let me finish, let me finish, okay, okay, okay. Uh, these workers voluntarily engage with these firms, and as a result, they use the firm's capital and then provide profit. And I mean, at that point, they're paid what the market determines. If you can't get down with that, don't work with the firm. God damn, if that's not America, I don't know what is. Sure. Um, I mean, there's a couple of things I can approach there. First of all, I mean, you brought up a, a distinction between capitalism and, and corporatism, but honestly, that's a... Uh, that's a, a, a distinction without a difference. Um, corporations are the natural result of the advancement of uh, capitalism, of consolidating. Oh, I uh, thought you were going as a natural person. As a what? Uh, I thought you were going that corporations were natural people that uh, need their rights expanded. Oh, oh, I see. No, that no. See, that's that sounds to me like what you believe, not what I believe. And if you want to know what I believe, you have. Well, to I mean, the to the words. Supreme Court believes the same thing that I do. That corporations are people and have the same rights to free speech that you and I do. Yeah. Um. The uh, I think there's a like what, but Citizens United, right? Something along those lines was that decision. Yeah. Um. That uh, you know, it was historically a, a historically bad step for political transparency in our country. You know, I I mean, listen you know blame me for being a a marxist materialist a you know believing in 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 uh, observation and the you know uh fallibility of human constructs that we can build and improve upon them but i don't take uh the supreme court's beliefs as word of law on anything we these things are still subject to moral discussions and it is possible for a supreme court to make the wrong decision i mean hell just this last monday some of you may not know but the supreme two of our supreme court members expressed their um disagreement with uh the obergfell decision which was the decision that allowed gay people to get married well yeah country. they're just following precedent oh, which was you had to I go see. through the uh chambers of congress and well order that's not to, their opposition um, they have a moral opposition right, right? they have a moral opposition to it so what happens when you have so, something like that so basically what i'm hearing demon mama is that you disagree with the supreme court that sounds pretty <laughs> anti-american to me Damn. Threatening yeah. democracy we have nine, or you? We, have nine we have nine justices brought by a number of uh presidents both left and right and you're saying that all of our presidents and all of our justices are wrong the, the how many years of cumulative legal experience moral experience life experience that you just don't have 
and you're saying oh, are that they're you a wrong? Supporter, just real quick, Why do the you second two matter? Them? It should just be legal experience, right? Are, are you? Uh, a, well, I mean, you would also want the wisdom of knowing how to interpret laws in a just way, and then knowing how different life situations can affect people. If Darren uh, generally yes, goes wisdom. into making these opinions, I mean, no, the I just I want I just want textualists who have um, good experience in the law field. That's all I want on the Supreme Court. I really do not care if they've had a lot of life experience or not. Like if Daniel Cameron, so is a would you be okay with I replacing the Supreme Court? I don't care if he's forty. Would, would we? Would you be okay with uh, getting an AI that can just interpret the laws as, as facts and having that to interpret them for us? So then that way we don't have any human bias whatsoever. It's just literally as written. Damn! I didn't know we were going to get into if a conversation you can make a about robot automating like the Supreme that, Court. Maybe oh, of course we can. We have the technology. I don't think okay, so show me that robot, and then we'll have a conversation about it sometime. We can I'll just add, you. we yo, look, it's this easy. Look, uh, hey Alexa, how do we interpret the Supreme Court? Here's something I found on the web. According to SlidePlayer.com, the Supreme Court claimed its right to declare acts unconstitutional for the first time in. Well, there you go. It's that easy. Damn. Thanks, True. Thanks, this Alexa. was brought to you Obviously. by capitalism. <laughs> I mean, Amazon, right? Amazon. You uh, actually, actually, you socialists and you communists talk about how Amazon is so bad, but you proceed to use Twitch as your platform. There are other platforms, YouTube and uh, Live. That's what I'm talking about. Why aren't you guys there? Okay, you're giving Jeff Bezos money right now, and hey, guess what? You have no and, problem with. And it. speaking of Bezos money, if actually, you want to come to my channel right now and give me your Prime Gaming subscription, I will change my opinion this. to Watch yours. So away. come on over to twitchtv ragepope Give me those subs and bits, and uh, yeah. let everyone else hear your opinion. Hey, listen. Or, I, I would just like to. Just have, um, well, hold on. I gotta quit. You gotta quickly. let me. You gotta let me in to, to to oppose this. Come on. This is, you can't just go on here. What? There's no opposition. Oh, of course there is. This There's is controlled opposition. Oh, Speak I see. I see. <laughs> I mean, true. I'm glad you're at least again the mask coming off from the Democrat side of things, which I do appreciate. Well, you got to be yeah. used to being uh, a minority by now. I mean, there's barely any progressives in the country. It's all about the moderates. We saw how uh, Biden Voltron and just destroyed the, the the champion of that is Bernie. It was very sad, but Wait you got to be used to it. By are now. you all not progressives? Yeah, it's almost like moderates are the majority of the Democratic Party or something. Crazy how that works. It's almost like maybe because. You know, most well, people I are mean, moderate. I, I think Crazy. the biggest thing in our if you listen to, if you listen to, if you listen to horseshoe theory, Demon Mama, you're the right winger and we're the left wingers. Oh, true. Yeah, that's how it so, works. I, I really before like we it. move into like electoral popularity or something, I actually want like have some genuine like criticism slash questions. Um, sure, sure. To, to some of the stuff Demon Mama said. So, like specifically, when you talk about the level of control you want to give employees in the workplace, yeah. um, I have like two questions. One sure, of which sure. uh, we don't have to answer right now, which is. Do you have anything that I can look at that demonstrates that when workers own their companies that they consistently make better managerial decisions than, you know, like, I guess, whatever, whoever came up with the idea, right? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, you can just look at the list of companies right now, and you can see, side, I would like to you see can see the biggest ones are all corporations. And... But the biggest question I have is, as like, it seems to me that both- Wait, 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 didn't you want to let me individual... answer that question? Or, or is, oh, do, was... are you afraid of the answer? Because it sounds like you oh, might be no, afraid of was, Oh, no, he just yeah, wants you to DM. We can't be broadcasting you, like, this propaganda. I would like to see, like, a citation on that. And I was, yeah, I would, I was moving on because I kind of assumed you didn't have it oh, no, of right course. now. I, I'll, saying you could send it later if you yeah, want. Yeah, I'll to, send so. them later to you gladly. But real quick, I just have a couple for things in the audience. Sure, you know, ahead. because I know that with all these capitalists and, and libs on here, you're very, very self-important. And you don't really care about the audience that's out there it, outside of, you know, how they can benefit you to, personally. Well, the um, audience that I care about uh, is from my chat. And we actually yeah. got 100 bits that said hey, uh, my, Starbucks my is the her, greatest instrument for social change. Hear, yeah, on. yeah. See, listen, listen. I know we got the, we got the fucking hyper-egoist over here but you got to share with the other libs i'm going to teach you something from the leftist school about sharing all right got to share time with the other libs now splinters to answer your question <laughs> yes there's a couple of really cool um um things that you can look into first of all i would recommend looking up the um the statistics on the stability of uh, models such as co-ops co-ops are an incredibly incredibly stable way of building a business um and in fact it turns out that 
they actually, as an average, have a much longer life than the traditional firm. Now, of course, there are outliers and there are situations where the, that sort of organization isn't necessarily perfect, but it does grant us a lot of information on how well um, people can govern their own business. And another, uh, if you'd like to look on a large case study, I would suggest looking into the uh, Mondragon Corporation, a, a, a uh, co-op, a very, very famous co-op. Um, many, many people reference this, but it's one of the best examples we have of a wide-scale co-op. Um, also, there's a number of other places you can go and look at. Um, Spain, for example, there are regions of Spain that have um, up to 80% of the businesses in the area are uh, co-ops, and they report incredibly high quality of life and incredibly um, high productivity and worker satisfaction. So these are a number of things you can start, and I can send you the data afterwards if you want to get into the nitty gritty and, and try and find, you know, little things you want to pick at it, whatever. But that's the the stuff that I can tank you, uh, I can, uh, um, point you to as the audience. You can go check on oh, that stuff on your you. own time. Can I ask my second question before sure, everybody else inevitably tears into you about yeah, the, this, that example? So it seems to me that foreign investment and individual entrepreneurship are very like critical to the health of an economy. So I guess my question is, let's say that America does what you'd like it to do and we move to a economic system where in all of our workplaces, the workers own you know the majority of the decision-making capital. Whatnot. So in this world, why would a foreign investor or entrepreneur within or without America who's looking to start a business, why would they ever choose to do that in America with the knowledge that they could lose control of their vision by virtue of having employees, right? It seems like we would always opt for a non-socialist country in order to like start our new ideas and pursue whatever business ventures that we may think of. Well, I mean, that only is true if you presume that somehow seemingly magically, I don't know, that seems to be the logic that I get to most of the time, that somehow the firm structure actually does promote innovation. But we don't actually have any evidence that that's the case. In fact, um, most businesses that start that are started here in the country aren't just started by an individual. It's usually a, a partnership or a family that decides to go and start it. There's never just one person who does all the innovation. This is a myth that's been sold to us by uh, characters like Elon Musk or... Um, or Bill Gates, some of these people who want to sell you the idea that they invented everything that ever came out of their company, when in reality, um, may, while they may have had some innovation, they actually used a lot of capital to buy the innovations of many, many other people and then hoard the wealth to themselves while simultaneously going on PR campaigns where they can sell themselves as the most genius person who's ever lived. I mean, of course, you know, that's what, what you would do, right? If you wanted to sell yourself as a brand, you would- If the individual the parts were so <laughs> Valuable. The accumulation and the desire for gaining that capital is what provided the uh, innovation motivation, you're saying? I mean, no, that's not what I said at all. And in fact, it's funny to me that you would say that because um, that implies that there are a number, your, your argument implies that the only thing that separates a Bill Gates from the hundreds and hundreds of thousands of working Americans all the rest of the time is that they didn't want it bad enough. And if that's a worldview that you actually subscribe to, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. I, uh, maybe you need to meet some more people who, um, you know, who, who actually, you know, are working class and people who really work hard and really do want these things, but never get it. They might go from the day that they're born to the day that they die in poverty, despite working every day of their life. In fact, that's the story for a lot of Americans, especially now I mean, in COVID. If all the individual parts that they purchased were worth more, why didn't people make a better deal? Maybe they had union jobs and got screwed on the price of their labor. What? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what to make of um, that. I have a so question. You said, ha you said having the capital yeah, is what sure. made people have the ability to create these innovations. It wasn't a single individual. So the question has to become is where that capital came from initially. And so that came from having a robust market system. Well, that's not necessarily true. Um, uh, you have so wait, all these innovations that we enjoy from the modern world came well, can from you, socialism, can you, like, and not capitalist like, countries. Wait, wait, why don't we do the internet? You want to talk about the internet? Is that fair? We all like the internet. We're on the internet right now. Is that fine to talk about? Oh, you're going to bring up some... Sure, let's talk about the yeah. internet. Hold on. Yep, let's get into... I actually have some real questions. Wait, okay. wait, wait, hold on a minute. Listen, these... listen, I know you're greedy. I know. Wait, 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 wait. Why are we going with examples? We can go directly to theory. And Mark's theory specifically says you need capitalism to build everything so you can take it and have a good society. Without capitalism, you don't have anything from the man himself. Um, I'm sorry. Um, I, I, I didn't hear what you said there. Could you repeat that? Oh, uh, if we go directly to theory... 
we, Marx himself says, you need a capitalistic society to build up everything for you to enjoy. So if you want things to enjoy, you need capitalism. Really? I mean, uh, can you point me to the uh, to the th to the part where Marx uh, claimed that you need a capitalist society to have everything good? I would love to see that. I would really love to see that. That's wait, unironically, that is, isn't that an aspect of it? Marx talks about specifically like the rate. I think I'm pretty sure rage poison the, the theory aspect of this for socialism to come up. You probably need to use the fruits of capitalism in order to convert. Oh, well, I mean, um, if you secondly, think that's I, true, I mean, certainly if you think that was Marx's prevailing theory, you should be able to provide me some evidence that would uh, support that. Sure, I'll this give it to you after. No, no, no. Yeah, I but mean, I, I, you, you can't even give me, you know, which book that was in. Like, it seems to me sure, like sure, you're sure. trying to do a little, little, little rhetorical. No, 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 no. I'll, I'll bring it. I, I, but Some before I have, debate one, I have an actual question in a sense. Um, yeah, so yeah, we can move from that one. Let's pivot from that one. That no, wouldn't, be, no, that wouldn't swear, end well. I actually would have it? a real question. I'll link, sure, I'll link sure, it to you, sure, okay? go for it. Yeah, link it to me. I'd love to see it. One aspect of this is when it comes to market socialism and replacing a company's economy with a work like worker co-ops what happens to all the foreign investment that is poured into the economy if you mandate worker co-ops and secondly when a large aspect of our current economy is that capital moves and we're trying to make capital move a lot faster from firm to firm and it seems like worker co-ops allow for the slower movement of capital how do you address this issue in your form of society i'm sorry there were two questions there um the first one um was about foreign investment i don't understand mm -hmm. how that would have any difference um in in anything that would have no difference in in how um it would be wait, sorted wait, wait. out between a, a a standard firm and a co-op if there was an investment um in a, in a co-op startup that was a foreign investment or something then they would pay them back the same as usual that's the same thing i mean of course now if we want to skip ahead a few steps and we want to go to a a, a classless moneyless society which is obviously the goal i would love to reach someday i think we're a bit away from that but um but if we want to move towards that one um then unless we're getting rid of money i mean the co-ops won't get rid of money they will allow you a different and in fact perhaps even a better way of, of getting your money back and and can you restate the second question because i was a little sure. confused as to what you were going uh, to sure. um do you want me to respond to this question and then go to the next one because i have a critique of what you said is that okay with you or you want to go to the next one first so okay uh, whatever uh so i don't i don't know if you uh I don't know if I made this clear, clear enough, but the aspect of investment, for example, comes in the forms of like buying stock or buying capital investment with the return of profit. That is something that is very heavy in our current economy. It's not like a genuine startup investment, but actually owning shares of that firm come from international like um, international uh, investors, right? Sure. So what do we do about that if we convert? Do we just pay them all back? Well, I mean, it would depend. There's a number of models by which you could handle this. I mean, I'm sure that, uh, I mean, it really depends. It really depends on what your uh, what your goal is. If it's like a Bernie plan where they're moving towards having leadership um, on on like a, like a worker council that sits on the leadership, then that would not involve any sort of buybacks or anything. But there's a, there's a number of models for this. Uh, um, like, I don't know. I, like, as far as the individual specifics of how you would handle every individual firm, I'm sure that would depend on the firm. Um, that's a little bit, in my opinion, a little out of the scope of what we're talking about here. But I mean, there are new. Well, I mean, if you want to apply something across the entire nation, you should probably figure out how it's going to work before you force everybody to uh, get out of a perfectly good ship. Wait, yep. what? No, wait a second. Um, Hold on a second. That that's like saying like that's like saying like I think uh, that if I think that we should have uh, better health care, that you have to come up with the way that every single hospital in the United States would implement better health care, rather than just saying, "Hey, here's some things we can work towards." Wait, 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 wait. Do what, what, how many ships have you captained? How many ships have I captained? One hundred. Yes. One hundred. Yes. What were Check the names my Stellaris of all stats. The ships See how many hours I've played in Stellaris. How many? How many ships have you captained? In order, name them all. Name we're all we're uh, talking about real boats, not uh, LARPing yes, space. Yes, well, give me give me the real well, boats. Then, uh, then three. I've actually literally captained three boats. Well, uh, how many countries small, are there? But... Over one hundred ninety-six. Yeah, damn, that's a lot. A lot wow, of countries. that's a lot more than three. A lot more than three boats. Yeah, it's yeah, true. a lot more than. It's three almost boats. like there's more people on the planet, and that we invented this thing called. Uh, it's really complicated concept, I know, but um. There's this thing called specialization that was um, largely considered a, a part of, of the Ooh. development yeah. of and people yeah. specialize yeah. in running businesses like, look, and get this paid sounds to like lead some it. nerd shit. I bought the place up. I don't need to run it. I'm gonna leave that to Chud. Okay, now Chud, don't you change up my format? Okay, don't you act like a little rubble now? I'm gonna yeah, head out. Not. I'll 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 talk to the stockbrokers after, and we'll we'll talk about selling off all your assets. Okay, wonderful, brilliant. Okay, okay. cheers. Yeah, what I say. See you later. Many.
Okay, bye bye. Not actually. Um. So actually, what Rage just brought up is actually really important because obviously we do have specialization in the economy, but it is important to recognize that we have people who specialize in things like business management and corporate management. In fact, these are both degrees you can get from places like the Kelly School of Business in at Indiana University. You know, like because you know, that's like a really good business school, and that's something that people will care about. If they want you to join their company and help with something like that. So, um, you know, sorry, just to interject, listen, if people thought I was going to take this sitting down, they've got another thing coming. Demo mama, don't worry. I've got your back. Okay. Fuck. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to bring Kentucky fried comrade in. <laughs> <laughs> hey, leave hey. it to the communists to steal intellectual property. How's it going? Good hey. afternoon, comrade. Demon mama. How's it going? Good to see how's you. How's it going? Good Chad? to see you. Good to see you too. Demon Mama, you ready to like Super Saiyan combine energy right now? Listen, if I got to be to the beat to defeat the capitalists, yeah, I will. You know, speaking uh, of which, can a, I com a common enemy, a common enemy makes friends of us all. It's true. But uh, that being said, uh, so I've been listening for a while. I got a, I got a couple things to say. I want to come in a little bit hot here. Uh, first of all, Kentucky Fried Comrade. The one and only post post revolution. This Check it out on up Twitch. With it's good. The beat uh, second of all, I actually agree with Demon Mama one hundred percent in the very beginning. Uh, the, well, very beginning when I started listening to this, where Demon Mama said, uh, "You know, Democratic Party is the only game in town." I love my anarchist comrades, but I'm sorry, like I, I don't know the anarchist cells that are really going to do stuff right now. Uh, the Democratic Party is the place. We can have like disagreements on how to go about that. Where are the points of order True. and where are the points of uh, uh, stressing to actually change that into a socialist party? I think that's something uh, that's really worthwhile talking about. Uh, that being said, um, I don't know which one of you said it. Um, aside from Demon Mama, you all kind of sound the same to me. I, I don't know who's who in True. this. Um, but someone was saying something about Marx uh, talking about the necessity of capitalism. And Easily. I wanted to say that you are absolutely correct. And if you wanted to um, actually have a citation for it, uh, there's a little book. Some of you may have heard of it. Uh, it's actually not a book. It's Can a pamphlet. It's person? called The Communist Manifesto. Thank and uh, he talks about his is. stagist theory of uh, uh, political economic development, where he talks about the need to go from the ancient societies from the slave societies to the feudal societies to capitalism and capitalism giving way to socialism once a certain level of development is reached. He has a quote in there talking about how capitalism has far surpassed the wonders of the ancient Egyptians and the ancient Greeks. Uh, he talks about that as a historical necessity in the goal of developing the productive forces of capital so that workers can once take it over. So what you're saying is that uh, now is good enough. We don't want to uh, go into the stars. You think we've had enough progress for humanity? Uh, no, actually, I want to go backwards. Um, I think we've gotten too far. Um, I think we should go backwards. Um, the stars, that's way too far. We need to go backwards. We need to get rid of a lot of this technology. Um, we need to actually go back to the Stone Age because we need that primitive communism. I missed the anarcho primitivists when I listed all the different flavors of socialism out there. Oops. Next time, Dari. Next yeah, time. A but I, I, <laughs> a lot of different yeah, flavors. I was gonna. Uh, I was gonna say I was kind of unsatisfied with Demon Mama's answer about that last one. So I'm not necessarily asking you to go into every single specific, but a large part of mandating co-ops is is foreign investment. So things like the stock market, for example, uh, like things like foreign investment wouldn't happen without massive forms of free trade agreements, right? The ability from capital to flow from nation to nation. Uh, this, this whole aspect of like eliminating the stock market in order to get this goal, or on the other hand, the only alternative is using like public stock. How do you deal with that? Would you want to eliminate the stock market in this sense? Do you know what the Meadner plan is? No. Go look it up. Is that I'm a sorry, this has already it? been dealt with. This was dealt with in the 70s. Go look up the Meadner plan. 
Chip, you typical were communist. Talking about it. All they say, say is go read theory. Go read the <laughs> yeah, yeah, I forgot. Plans or theory. So he here's the funny thing. Again, like I said, there's a number of ways you can do it. You can do it through buybacks. You can do it through a a, a reinvestment. Pro there's a whole bunch of ways that you can handle this. You can even just say, hey, for the time being, we're going to have these, uh, you know, have these co-op firms um, participate in, in another market. But, um, but these are all, these are the details of how we work out the steps of getting towards something that we can admit is better. And that's the, that's the, that's so, the, uh, where we all disagree. Well, to, to, to actually answer the question, uh, I, so when it, when it comes to, uh, social ownership over the means production. So, uh, this was actually worked out back in the seventies. Uh, you know, write this down, write this down guys. Uh, there's a guy named Olaf Palme. He was the prime minister of Sweden and he enacted, well, tried before he got assassinated, uh, tried to enact something called the Meadner plan. And what the Meadner plan did was basically utilize the funds of the state to essentially buy sections of uh, stock so that the state had uh, ownership stock over industry. And the overall plan was to do that over time and actually pay it out pay it out as, you know, at market price uh, in such a way that after roughly 10, 20, 30 years, uh, the state would actually have control over the major sections of industry. It's called the Meadner Plan. Look it up. And uh, how much uh, active influence does the state uh, partake in the Swedish model? Or are they just a passive investor who's just on to take, uh, take all the gains of the capitalists? Uh, well, see, Olaf Palme got assassinated, so the Meadner Plan actually never happened. Well, I mean, Sweden does own a uh, vast major or a uh, very large uh, stakes in uh, many of their own uh, corporate or corporations inside of Sweden, right? There are activist shareholders with lesser stakes in companies that take a more proactive role than the Swedish government does uh, in, in their own investments. This is a wild ride. Sure, I'm sorry, I'm not sure what your point is. Are you uh, so so Sweden owns a large amount of stocks in these companies, right? There are investors who specifically have purchased stocks for the we'll for the purpose of influencing these companies and what they do to maximize their gains. Who have less uh, less uh, ownership than Sweden does in some of these companies. It seems like Sweden is just along for the rides, having purchased these shares. They're not actually involved in any of the production. That's all being left to the capital markets. Yeah, they didn't actually do the Meadner plan. I, I'm again, I'm not sure what your point is. Yes. They have stock ownership in certain uh, certain industries. They do not actually enact control over them because, again, they did not actually enact that plan. The guy who wanted to do that plan got assassinated. Well, there actually were a lot of industries that they actually did control. Like there were literally government companies like Absolute Vodka used to be government run. And there are many other companies. Oh, I'm sure you know reading. plenty about Absolute Vodka, buddy. I well, I mean, I don't because I legally cannot drink. But the point <laughs> is, back in the '80s, back in the '80s, you know, there when they had a really high tax rate, <laughs> and um, they had a lot of government-owned corporations, um, their economy was suffering. It was like a basket case economy, and Maybe you know we'll how see. they fixed that? They went more towards capitalism, actually. How so? so they how, used how to be those... more socialist in the '80s. And that didn't work for them. Wait, when you in say the same way that work Israel, I've got a question. Have... I've got a question for you, uh, Shadows. Yeah. Uh, have you ever shopped at Have you ever shopped at Sears? At Sears? Yeah, Sears. No, I don't think I have. Why do you think that is? Um, I don't know. I don't remember what happened to Sears. I just remember the Sears so back, Tower became the Willis Tower. That's all I remember. So, so back following the uh, 2008 financial crisis, uh, oh, I can't remember his name. Maybe, maybe Demon Mama knows. But uh, Sears uh, uh, put in place the CEO, and what he noticed, what he noticed about the corporate structure of Sears, was that it's actually like the internal dynamics of a corporation actually behave exactly like a centrally planned economy. And he didn't like that. He actually thought that was really, really kind of gross. He didn't believe in centrally planning uh, industry. So what he did at Sears was he tried to um, make the different sectors of Sears actually compete against each other. 
And did you know what happened? The company failed. Uh, yeah, the company failed. It's been in and out of bankruptcy uh, basically every year for the past decade. Yeah, uh, it because guess to do what? With it the turns out they, because guess what? It turns out high quality out. products and the low pro quality goods, and they, they just no the CEO himself. Here, I actually trust the CEO of Sears more than you, whichever one of you said that. Um, because guess what? The CEO of Sears actually admitted having a centrally planned structure for the company was better than having the various sectors compete with one another. Yeah, that's that, true that's in a corporation. And this is also yeah. why workplace democracy is not the best idea, because believe it or not, in a, in a, a democratic a system, a you have a very common occurrence called gridlock, which prevents things from getting done. And that's that can be good when you have to deal with a government because you don't want the government to just ram stuff through, 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 through. But when you're dealing with a corporation, corporations need to be efficient. They're trying to maximize so why does, profits. Why does, well, yeah, no, no, I agree. Corporations exist to maximize profit. That's a truism. Um, that does not actually do the work that you think it does. But, you know, if you think that it does the work that you think it does, then it begs the question, why does Mondragon exist? Why does Winco exist? Why do any number of cooperative enterprises exist? So my, my why question do... is... Oh, go my ahead. question to you is for Sears specifically. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, sorry. Listen, listen, listen. listen. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. We're getting quite far away from the point now, and we're at like ten minutes over that segment. So I think we should probably start to move on to the next topic now. Okay, um, we'll have to leave that there. So next up on the agenda, uh, we are going to be discussing. Um, so basically, it's a simple one. Be bear in mind, these are all topics that have been picked by Biden. Okay, I've got no control of these remember. topics. I don't want to fucking talk about Biden, but it is what it is. So Biden has called to increase funding for police for training purposes. Should the phrase defund the police be thrown out? That's the question. Let's uh, be real, okay? Regardless of Biden's position on the police or police funding, defund the police there wasn't is any. a terrible slogan that needed to be thrown out day one, okay? That's the reality of it. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I'd, um, I'd like to go next. I think, I think <laughs> the idea of defunding the police is um first of all weird and two i think and two i think it's weird that we're on this slogan now considering that i remember back when um michael brown was shot a lot of people started talking about how we actually need to increase funding to the policing and how we need to retrain cops how we, the way we train cops does not work you know we train cops an average of seven months in this country and six of those months are with firearms training so when people go to fucking hammer school a lot of things start to look like nails and so they were talking about how we need to train cops for longer we need to increase funding so they can better handle situations with say homeless people or drug addicted people so i think we should go back to that and talking about how we need to a train police for longer so they have much 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 more time with okay. um dealing we'll with de-escalation of a situation and b i think we should also consider the idea of the emergency services banner of police dealing with multiple things i mean right now we basically have two emergency services firefighters and the police the police could become like a big tent version of emergency services that don't involve fire so you could have policemen who deal with crime Policemen who are social workers, policemen who what? are um, like psychiatrists and can help with, you know, people who are drug addicted. So you have different cops who specialize in different areas. So like you would have a social worker cop that specializes. And, you know, if someone calls saying like there's a homeless man in front of my business, um, that's where that that kind of cop would be called to the scene to help with that homeless person. I have kind of a, uh, I, I know you want to introduce somebody, Chud, uh, but but once you introduce them, uh, I have kind of a round table question that I kind of want to ask everybody if that's okay. And then I have a follow up after that, if, if, that, if that's sure. cool. Yeah, go ahead. I'm yeah, asking yeah. Chud. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Uh, introduce the, the oh, person. Oh, hey, Do Dr. K, do you want to go ahead and give yourself a quick intro? It's me, Dr. K. And I really don't like the police. That's why I'm here. Is uh, something got said that made me go, "Ooh, 
I I want to I want to fight about that. Pog. So yeah, um, I'm I'm willing to engage Shadow's thing. You're willing to give me the time of day, Chud, if that's all good. Yeah, cool. Yeah, no problem. Um, right. So, so yeah, um, defund and abolish the police is is actually very important and a relevant thing because. And here's the thing, Shadow. I agree with you. They should be getting more training, but you know that that's yeah, all good true, and stuff. Marinara, true. But the issue is, is the money that Dylan's would gone be right needed now. to give them extra training. Chud's back like, in charge for you a can bit. add to that budget, but overall their Please budget does need back. to we'll decrease. See. For example, in the city of Los Angeles, the police department eat up fifty percent of the city's budget. All other services get get half. Like f every other service combined has what the police have. The Los Angeles police have a budget bigger than the fucking North Korean army. Like it's insane. It is absolutely insane the budget these people get. So yes, abolish the police. It's a rotten fucking stump that needs to be dug out, fucking pulled right out of the ground, and started over from scratch. It's a fundamentally corrupt institution. There are fucking gangs within the police department where in order to get into the gang, you have to kill a civilian. And this is a big gang that is reaching through every single department of the LAPD. Like, yes. And this is, this is systemic across the entire country. American policing is fucking insane. They are a occupying force. Like, yes, they absolutely need to be abolished and started over. Dr. K, you might be entirely right, and I might agree with pretty much I am entirely that, right. right. But that does not change the fact that none of that is communicated to defund the police. When you talk uh, about the mainstream, non-like politically hyper-involved, non-online politics person who hears that slogan, they think you want to get rid of the cops, okay? And I'm sick of having to I mean I do my moderate okay. If that's what you want to do, then we can argue about that. But that is completely different than so, what you just sold me was that the police are corrupt and they have problems. The natural takeaway from that, at least for me, is how do we fix those problems? I don't think yeah, so, the whole thing. Oh, out. So, 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 I actually I think Dr. K is actually right on this. So I think what we do is we're not actually going far enough with defunding the police. So the first thing that we have to look is death is not a right granted by the Constitution. We have police officers dying. We have innocent people dying. We have protesters dying. We need to get a robotic police force out there to dispense the cold uh, logical justice of the law with no human no. intervention. No, fuck off with that. This is let's uh, make judge. Like, I don't know if that's judge a joke dread, or not. right? Yeah, this is the judge yeah. dread outlook. I mean, Robocop. Damn it, demon mama! You're stealing my jokes. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, Kentucky Fried Comrade, I think you wanted to say something a moment ago. So did you want to? Uh, well, I I did. Uh, Doctor K kind of uh, it kind of came in hot and and basically kind of did where what i was gonna go where i was gonna go with that so uh i, I do appreciate it dr k and you know kfc um, i'm gonna stay hot fuck the police i am not a fan <laughs> of them okay, no no I, 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 no i, I agree i just like i had a, i had a whole police. thing i was gonna play three-dimensional chess with the libs but no, no you, don't play three-dimensional chess come in like a fucking mallet and smash don't <laughs> fucking try to be subtle or play little mind games well, no, I, I, I did have a question for Splinters. I, I, I have a question for Splinters. This isn't this isn't going to show wild. up on the 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 Twitch stream per se. This is just something I was kind of looking at on the side in the Discord. Um, is that is that a Max Sterner um, uh, avatar that you got there? A Max Sterner avatar, as far as like yeah. the uh, the artist. It's not. No. Oh, it's not. Okay, okay, never mind. This is, this is totally this is okay. Okay, that makes sense. Never mind. It just okay, move on without me. Let, yeah, move like, on without poor, me. Poor, poor, I, I I see where you get that. Uh my vision's obviously shitty, but uh no. Um so I well, this has been a this has been a fun uh little segment in LARPing, yeah, smash the police, but in, in the realm of actual politics and the modern democrats, uh Biden is talking with people who are affected in these communities and are actually being harmed. And there's a round table of people from these communities to tell their grievances. And then there's Biden himself being there in attendance along with progressives like uh, Bernie to actually figure out ways to solve this issue. Uh, and defunding the police across the board is very not liked as a saying. So the 
goal isn't to just. Then why does Larry Krasner exist? The goal is to reduce the amount. Do you know who Larry Krasner is? Within the police force itself, and so we can do that by. Do you know who Larry Krasner is? Eliminating, hey, see, don't. eliminating private prisons, um, ending things like cash bailouts, uh, mandatory minimum sentences, getting a federal standard for police departments, decriminalizing marijuana. These are all things that Biden wants to do. These are all things that can. Yeah, these happen. these are it's basic happening. fucking steps. And they're not this fantasy smash the police bullshit that will never, ever, ever happen except for. Well, here's the thing. Biden water. shit. That's good. I accept that. I like that. That's a good like first typical step, typical but you don't stop there. That is not where you end. That is the beginning of police reform in this country. What Correct. community in what world thing. wants that? Yours, but not the rest, not the Wait, actual actually community. quite a lot. You do realize that 81% of the African American community in this country wants to either keep policing levels the same or increase in their community, correct? I'm sorry. Like that wait, is wait, an actual um, stat. Is that was that the Trump thing that he said in the uh, town hall? Do you have like a citation for that? Because I've never actually seen that. Yeah, it's actually Gallup. Yeah. So I would also nice. I'd love to see it's how many people they ask. Because uh, that, that sounds because it just it just seems kind of weird. It kind it kind of seems weird that like um that like the largest civil rights movement in history, which a lot of which was focused on police abolishment and police defunding. And I'm going to put this in the stream yeah, chat. Sure, too. sure. Let's take a look at it. Um, that'd be great. Um, but yeah, it just seems a little weird to me that that would somehow be um, unpopular. Um, to me, it sounds like maybe there's going to be when we open up this study, we're going to find a little more about how they ask the questions, you know, these sort of like these sort of lying with statistics sort of things that you can do when you are just doing polls of a thousand people or whatever. So I do have a yeah, question. Yeah, because Gallup doesn't I, release any underlying bias or anything along with their polling data. Uh, I, I, I don't I don't care about the Gallup poll. I do have a question. Do uh, any of you know who Larry Krasner is? Nope. No. Anybody? No. I don't, I don't think anyone's care. read as much as you have. So Larry Krasner is the uh, district attorney in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, he got elected, I want to say 2017. Uh, and he got elected on a uh, mandate of essentially decriminalizing uh, a number of different things. And what ended up happening, uh, it was really interesting. Uh, he's a really good case study of the um, uh, the crossroads between the concept of defund the police versus um, retooling the police. Uh, but he got elected in 2017, and he basically, you know, decriminalized marijuana by uh, by uh, prosecu uh, prosecutorial mandate. Uh, Decriminalize marijuana, decriminalize prostitution, uh, ended uh, uh, minimum jail sentences of, of a certain type. It's very complicated, but essentially he began a wave of progressive district attorneys. Uh, we've got a recent one, I believe, back in 2018, uh, Chesa Boudin, I want to say his name is, in San Francisco. Um, this is actually something that can be done. It's being done and it allows hmm. that exact type of thing where you can retool the police to going after actual crimes while at the same time protecting the rights of marginalized people and uh, poor people across the board. It's very doable. Okay, so that's interesting, but I'd actually like to point something very important about what you mentioned. Yeah, you mentioned something about decriminalizing um, prostitution, which I have nothing against. However, uh, studies have shown that when you look at European countries that have only decriminalized, that the amount of sex trafficking actually does not change after it's decriminalized. What you need to do is fully legalize prostitution in order to be able to effectively crack down on any type of sex trafficking or sex slavery within a country. So. Yeah, I mean, like sure, there's a lot of things I want to get done. I want to, like, get rid of capitalists. But in the meantime, when you have district attorneys who are actually good and actually progressive and uh, doing things that actually yeah, help people, they can actually that. get a lot of stuff done in a very direct way, in a way that uh, you might not other be, uh, otherwise be able to do with, you know, bourgeois politi uh, politics. 
Yeah, and also I just wanted to I just wanted to get in here and and say my piece on uh, on this part, which is um, you know I don't know I find it like almost hilarious the idea that instead of actually creating a specialized emergency services department for things like mental health crises or social crises like you know drug addiction or whatever that you said we should just give this we should just lump this all into the police as if they don't already as as kfc stated or perhaps it was dr actually i think it was dr k who stated the uh, the facts about about how large the budgets of a lot of police um, departments are, which is true in many, many countries uh, or many, many cities in the United States. Um, that we should further even go into where it's wasted. What's that? If you want, I can even tell you exactly where the money is being wasted because it's three fucking things every time. Yeah, go for it. Sure. It's being wasted on overtime, on dealing with lawsuits, and on buying new equipment. Those are the big three. Yep. Yeah, yeah so um, we can expand sovereign immunity to the police and we can get rid of that, right? Very easy. So so one well here. So one of the big problems is uh, due to police union negotiations and the fact that, you know, governments just don't push back on police when they threaten something as much is police have incredibly, <laughs> incredibly gracious overtimes. Nice So meme. the police overtime... Nice meme. Uh, I'll show it after, than, Internax. Uh, I think it's like five times their usual salary, and it's an enormous drain on departments everywhere. Um, so next up, the uh, big waste is on equipment, right? So they're hold buying on, you know, on. equipment that I, they I, don't... Shadow, I'm in? talking right now. Shadow, I'm No, I actually right want to give you credit on something and like point out what you're saying, because what you actually just said is so true and it's super important like these first two things that you're mentioning overtime and lawsuits this is true there's so much money wasted in this area and i totally agree that we need to do something about it but there's something we can do and it's called all right so i'm gonna get back to talking now unions so i'm gonna get back to talking unions. now shadow thank you um but. so yeah the other big one is on equipment which is they're <laughs> buying things like armored vehicles they're buying things like taser shields incredibly expensive incredibly useless equipment that we really don't need to be giving to these departments um you know the police in america are are equipped way more like soldiers than they are like polices in other countries so you yeah. know frankly there needs to be a massive scale back on that yes Gina. um and you know stop giving military surplus to police departments that's kind of yeah, fucked Dr. up okay, cool. um so, and then thirdly and then thirdly um on yeah, lawsuits, right? So so when police uh, get sued for their inevitable brutality that they inflict on people, um, the money for their lawsuits Dr. generally K will does, come does out of a public fund, meaning that your tax dollars are think, often being used to it. protect police who did things like mace a pregnant mother or something like that. So, so I, I, that I, that's a huge, huge drain that I... Uh, police should not be getting uh, public funds to pay for their lawsuits. So I have to correct. I have to correct Dr. K on one thing. No, they don't just mace pregnant women. They also shoot innocent people's dogs. That's, they do yeah, that. No, too. no, that's they, true. They do plenty yeah, of awful yeah, shit. Can we, I, I could go on all night. Well, just let me. Let me. So just, how, how much, much overtime would here. you have listen, to work? Listen. I got ambushed here at the beginning. Let me just bring in some relevant data, all right? Let me just get a little bit. Because uh, there's some publicly available information that just came out of New York State about the sheer amount of tort law settlements that the police had to make. Now, tort laws, as you know, is a vi often violations of civil rights. Um, and if you would, would like an example of, of one such incident, I would I would encourage you to go look up um, look up the uh, the guy in Buffalo. Uh, I'm trying to remember his name off the top of my head, but uh, it's not coming to me, but I can grab it for you. Um, but he was an, ol an older man who was protesting 100% peacefully, was pushed over, his skull cracked against the, uh, against the pavement by police. Um, and then he was later... Um, accused falsely mind you by donald trump of being an antifa uh agent not that uh you know that's a you know we're just gonna say that drop that there with that's no whatever Continue. but yeah um but you know so there's this sort of demonization of protesters and then brutality that is let out among them and then if that ever goes to court if it ever even sees the day in court then those police departments have to settle out because they're so careless and so militarized so defunding mm -hmm. the police is actually a great way to crack down on that a police uh, a police department that is that is deploying an incredible amount of chemical weapons um on on their people uh, you defund them and all of a sudden they can't buy those chemical weapons and all of a sudden they can't uh they can't be engaging so carelessly so that they can settle out on everything they actually have to see their so, day in court 
So, and, and I want to follow up. I want to follow up. Hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, I, I really, we, should, we should just expand on. sovereign immunity to cover the police. There's no hold reason on. the police should be getting sued for upholding the public. The oh, they should be sued. They should be sued. Actually, they should be sued I want to follow up. I thought you said you were allowed. I want to follow up. I want to follow up. Demon Kentucky, I have a question for you both real quick, though. Sure, sure, sure. This will only take five seconds. Is um, if I worked at McDonald's or if I worked anywhere else, right, and I did incredible misconduct while on the job, would my would my uh, would my workplace cover my lawsuit? No. no. Yeah. So this is an anomaly. But carry I want to follow up something. Yeah, this is a huge no! problem with unions. You're right. Hold on. I want to follow up something. Oh, it's I wanna, funny that you say that. I want to follow up something that Demon Mama was saying. Sure, sure. Uh, this is actually back in 2017. Yeah, he wants uh, cops to be in New beard. York City. The the five boroughs, baby. Uh, they the police there basically stopped doing what they called proactive policing and actually essentially went on strike because Bill De Blasio, Bill De Bung uh, Bungler, and you know what happened? Crime went down. It actually turns out that less policing was better. Okay, no, so, I, I I actually 100% agree with that. Proactive. Oh, thank you. That's a fucking fantastic. I'm glad you've uh, joined us. Policing. Abolish the police. Wait, look, I let's... would actually be fine with getting rid of like you know patrol routes on police forces altogether. A good one. And huh? that they don't patrol communities at all, and they only respond to calls for police, like calls to the scene of a crime. Like honestly, I personally see. I think the police should better for at least the police we have right now that uh, are supposed to be dealing with crimes, that that part of the police should deal more as an arm of the justice system and that they should be reactive in the sense that they should respond to the scene of a crime to arrest the perpetrators or after the crime is committed, they should go out and um, seek the perpetrators and arrest them so they can have their day in court. So how do you feel about um, when I would like to police departments well, I, I, uh, make crimes? I question though uh, so i i've heard a lot of things on this panel specifically and i don't necessarily think that we dis disagree as, as much as it seems um but like back to the initial topic i i'm just curious who thinks that like using the slogan defund the police is optically appealing does, does anyone think it's optically um, appealing I, I'll, I'll let someone answer that but po poly your camera's frozen could you re-exit web and come back in sure sure yeah lib internet yeah fuck the police uh abolish the police is a great statement and should be said more no, I won't be doing that, Endernax. Yeah, that's so not, if you don't want, really uh, I, I guess I got a couple <laughs> no. of things to push back. So one, uh, can you cite me anything that unions get five times their salary because of overtime? Because I, I'm just thinking about how overtime is paid. It's generally double time. Thanks so you would have to be working 6,000 hours it. a year to be getting paid five times your normal salary. True. That's true. The thing is, is that, you know, police unions actually get disgusting contracts that are fucking insane. And the fact is that when you're negotiating with a union that is the not unions, um, public unions are because the problem is when you're negotiating with an entity that is not a company that is not seeking a profit, when you are negotiating with a local government, unionizing is completely different because the thing is public unions are good. It's just police unions that are bad. You know, public unions are not good. Teachers unions are actually can cause a lot of problems, and we can get into that if teachers you want. Teachers unions to. are awesome and hilarious. I know we're not talking about teachers unions, folks. On the yeah, yeah, I, I, I know. Okay. I just so I'll, to focus on uh, police unions, the issue there is that when they want five times for overtime, you know, it's not like dealing with a company that says we're only going to pay it's twice because we only have so much and and um gross revenue oh yeah sure. what's going to happen is they're going to say sure we can give you five times and then they get more gross revenue by just taxing okay, well that's people ridiculous this is what happens when you have a union that's Obviously not negotiating with a company seeking profit they will just say shadow, yes to anything and they will tax more shadow can i ask you something yeah so you mentioned earlier that you're you're not old enough to buy alcohol which you know fair enough that happens um whom's amongst us um have you ever worked in a union shop have i ever worked in a union shop no yeah. but i no but i have like extended family who do okay um have you worked in a non-union shop here yeah, I've, I've got something even better to add if you're think... no i actually haven't worked in like a shop before have you have you worked 
Just hey, yeah. just ask your question. What are you asking him? Yeah, quick kick, quick kicking around. Okay, all right, that's all. That's all. Go ahead. Oh, I mean, right. I, I just like to add that so, I've worked in no union point. shops and non-union shops, and we've had projects delayed by three days because the union doesn't want to send someone over to do something that I could do in two minutes because we're not allowed to touch things. So yes, I would say that there's a big problem with unions in both the public and private sector. All right. So here, here's yeah. here's the real of it, right? Is, um. You say public unions um, basically get this unfair advantage. I can tell you this right now, as someone who's worked with public unions on multiple occasions, that governments do actually know, in fact, how to play hardball with public unions. They just don't do it with police unions because they like the police unions. Like, I, I, I was, there was an L.A.'s teachers strike not, what, four years ago, right? And I'll tell you what, the fucking uh, uh, L.A. city government, they know how to play hardball with them and make sure that they get as few of their demands enforced as possible. So so don't don't worry about public unions being an unfair entity to negotiate with. The, the, the governments can stand up for themselves. Don't worry about that. Oh, well, you must not be aware of what governments are like here in Illinois, where literally almost all local and state politicians are bought out by the teachers unions. And they can literally that's get any fucking right. awesome. It's not <laughs> awesome. That does sound awesome. Say, I, feel, I feel like we're moving away from the topic a bit. Yeah, yeah, wait a minute. Wasn't about... the West Virginia... Wait, was that what was just brought up? West Virginia? I mean, wasn't that a wildcat strike anyway? No, they're talking about Illinois. Oh, Illinois. Okay. Yeah, Yeah, I'm talking... I, I don't know. It's just weird that you guys were earlier talking about how bad Citizens United is and the problem with special interests. But now that you, now you guys think it's awesome when, you know, a public union buys out politicians. So yeah, I think that is awesome and cool. Okay, well, so I do think the public union is radical. So, so the things that you like, it's good if they buy out politicians, and the things that you don't like, it's bad when they buy politicians. Wait a minute. Yes. Listen. Yes. Actually, I'm an no. Ideologue completely. Through and through. Uh, I, I actually. I, I actually. Fair. 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 Well, wait a second. No, I. I There's I, a I distinction there that's, that's that like we're supposed to be talking about. I'm looking at a oh, yeah, yeah. poll right in front of me that says that the 73 percent, the vast majority of Americans, at least you know in their poll. Um, support funding for the pol more funding for the police, or at least keeping it at the same levels. Pair this with an AP poll that says that wording matters, and that when we, when we talk about taking away that funding in order to put it towards more dedicated social services, like uh, social workers, so company police, Americans support it. What this tells us is that Americans actually do support the kind of nuanced meaning behind defund the police that we're talking about right um buddy is, buddy but buddy. they don't support the actual optics of the slogan of defund all right they believe okay it so here's taking splinter here's here's a no, no, no i really want to i really want to go the reason that this is important is because it speaks to the idea that the slogan is bad. There's a reason that Donald Trump and the Republican Party have been pushing the optics that Democrats want to defund and abolish police. Because you may think it's good, it may actually running longer be than good. I was told. But the fact is most Americans don't like it. And when you tell people to say it more, all you're doing is making it harder for Democrats to gain ground. God damn it. Okay, so no, I want to go after right. this. I actually really want to go after this for a moment uh, because I... I do find it kind of silly when people just kind of like throw around polling stats like that Listen, um, willy nilly uh, for the Listen, simple reason that point, if you were to go and look at uh, Martin Luther King's approval ratings, because that was actually something people polled when he was alive. Uh, if you were to go look at his approval ratings during the civil rights movement, do you know what his approval ratings were? They were no, negative. They were negative. Most people hated Martin Luther King while he was alive. It is only in death that people have found him to be a uh, uh, inspirational and lovely figure. At the time of his life, people hated him overwhelmingly. And I do not think you want to put yourself on the side of, well, you know, Martin, uh, polling data shows that people don't really like you. Maybe you shouldn't be representing this movement right now. Well, I don't think you maybe. want to put yourself in that state. That's KFC. the weakest comparison so, I've really ever KFC. heard. KFC, I don't, that's yeah, not even important. So have you, have you even supervised any union employees? So KFC, I have that, no that's idea. That's not even. I can't speak to the Martin Luther King. Okay. Yeah, right? KFC, All that's I a dumb hill to die on. in my experience watching politics, it seems to be that when a politician or Give me just one second. political I'm gonna run party to the and are pushing email. for or platforming ideas that the majority of the electorate don't agree with, that that thing doesn't happen. 
Okay. All right. So, so when the majority here, can of the I... electorate does not agree with this statement of defund the police or reducing funding, it worries me that we would look to try and attach that bad optics to that party even more by going out and repeating things like abolish the police, defund the police, et cetera, et cetera. So, so Splinter here, let me, let me engage with that. So, sure. um, something like the wall also isn't popular with the majority of Americans yet that the Republicans are pushing for that. And that is because they understand the basics of what happens when you do, uh, negotiations, right? And this, uh, you know, my history is in ne union negotiations, but this is true with all negotiations, is that when you start haggling, when you start, like, trying trying to get something, you start from an extreme position, mate. You start with your furthest end goal, right? And then you're like, all right, I'm taking this hard position, and then you can negotiate me down from there. You don't start in the compromised position of, oh, we'll we'll make a few tiny changes to the police here or there, right? You don't. And, like... Yes, sometimes in life, when when something big needs to be changed that's important, it may in fact be unpopular. Sometimes you have to fucking stand for something and when, have beliefs that aren't popular. When, right? you, when you when you negotiate, and you're just keeping on losing it, it's gonna sit with you on the other side of that negotiation. Wait, wait, table. no, I want to hear one at a time. Right? I want to hear Splinter. In order to negotiate down, right, to be in a position to negotiate, we have to actually win. So if starting yes. from this extreme Thank position you. means that we can't even get the administration in office, that we can't get the senators we need, then what's the point? Yes, <laughs> Police this negotiation okay, actually, can happens I add on at a local that? level, though. Can I add on to that? Because I actually want to respond to this. Like, I, I get what you're saying of the idea uh, is of if you shoot for the stars, you might reach the moon. But the point is... When you shoot for the stars, a lot of the American people are going to be like, you know, I'm actually not interested in sh shooting for the stars. And they're not going to vote for you. So you it, cannot go out there and act like this is your actual position because you will not win an election. Well, this has nothing to do with just like voting. This has to do with every single thing. When you come to the negotiation table, you need to be coming in good faith and willing to negotiate from a point that's actually somewhat reasonable. You can't just show up and say, I want you to hand over your entire corporation to me for nothing. Like no one's ever going to talk with you. No one's going to negotiate with you. If you want to show up, that you need to have literally reasons how why every your negotiation suggestion. I've ever been to that, goes. Yeah. So how did, how did those negotiations go for you? Pretty I'm, well. I'm sorry. We I'm talked down from there. I, I'm sorry. This is a little bit silly. Like when I was hey, canvassing, uh, when, many... when I was canvassing for Bernie Sanders, you would find a lot of people, the vast majority of people, they believe in Medicare for all. They know what Medicare is. Their grandparents are on it. They think it sounds pretty good. They would like to be on it. That's actually a pretty reasonable position to the vast majority. Why doesn't this show up in any polling data? Is it perhaps the biased like sample of you going for hey, back, Bernie everybody. knock door knocking? Just... Have you oh, actually looked at okay. the two things? Americans are totally fine. Totally fine with the hell that they have right now. I'm going to stop new people. Holy shit! Damn. Can I make two points, Chud? I would like to make two points in response to what spicy that, yeah, what he was saying. About I don't care. Someone just make a point. So one person. Okay, so I would like to make two points in response to that. So to um, what Kentucky Fried Comrade said. So one is um, I get what you're saying about Medicare for all, but I would say that you know the idea of com of defunding the policing is a very different idea from single payer health care. You know, like these are like in popularity, these are just never going to compare because there are a lot of people who understand and believe that, you know, the status quo the for health care is actually not going to work. And they would like to see a lot of changes. But there are a lot of people who are actually happy with the way the policing system works and are fine with the status quo. And sure, they might be privileged. They might not experience problems with the police. But they, these people still exist and they still matter when you're trying to get elected. And two, my second point is, um, I know that pollers came in here acting like, you know, a total neolib, which I totally love. I'm actually kind of um, having a man crush on him just for doing that. But can you switch over to the left? Because I'm tired of dealing with these fucking communists who really don't want to actually deal with reality and don't want to actually deal with the idea of realistic policy. So I would really like it if you could move to that. That felt like a bit of a hand wave. Me too. That felt like a bit of cope. 
We've been laying out a whole bunch of real policy here. That's the go-to. But, Everybody always goes to, oh, policy, demons, policy. Demon mama. What? How is it false to the police? That's not the point that we're trying to make. Like, like, specifically, like, how do you, like, how do you even, it's not politically viable when not even 25% of the population I don't even think... supports it. Like, this is, this is, like, not only is this, like, uh, like, this isn't, this specifically isn't like a jab at anyone here, but it seems like a really like ignorant argument to what's actually happening, r happening, right? So like, even if we want to make that Medicare for all like a, like a statement, as Shadows mentioned, the polling is not even comparable. Okay, having to rationally explain how this step goes to this step, and this is what defund the police means, and like this is what it means, wait, not wait, what wait, this wait, is. Wait. It's just optically like it's well, so hold, optically hold on a like ignorant. I, I, have a quick I don't know I have how a quick you can engage the political you. process just, if people don't even agree with what the meaning of it is. I, I have a quick question for you. Have you ever heard of a um a snack called um goldfish? Just get to your point. No, it's a serious question. Have you ever heard of the snack called goldfish? It's sometimes known as the snack that smiles back. Yeah, that they use a thing called a slogan that's catchy and gets you to begin talking about things. This is how all slogans work in the entire universe. And I noticed that's that a what lot Medicare of libs, for all. Listen, I know that a lot of libs like really struggle with the idea of a slogan that could promote talking about issues that are important that might not be on everybody's uh on everybody's plate right away. So yeah, generally slogans are something that's popular and are oh, yeah. well received and, by and, everybody who's the recipient of them. We've seen people funny from thing, a shit campaigns, out, advertising campaigns that have blown up in people's faces. We can look damn, at what really bad programs do to really good ideas. But there's this weird thing as it turns out defund the police is pretty fucking popular in fact i literally posted it's pretty a, popular among no, leftists no, it's no, 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 hey, 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 listen now politics. listen libs i know i know cope now no, listen. i demand citations yeah, i want for at least it. two links i popped this a while ago yeah, go ahead in the up. chat hey, pop it right open i got a I, i've got a nice little survey start with sega the more you play with it the harder it gets right how did that do for sega i don't know so let me ask you doing something. as good as defund the police well, I, because defund the police so a, has been one of the yeah, main it's a terrible slogan, slogan one of the and it's doing slogans that has motivated that one of the most want to get accomplished. one of the biggest I, I a, and most a, historical civil rights movements in history and you would downplay that and you would downplay their demands because uh, you think it can buy you smug little lib oh that's impossible you know it's the same kind of thing you're the type of person you you take the type of position where people would say hey you know what slavery is a bad be like oh goodness but the slavers won't get on with that that's what I hear. That's what I hear when you do shit like this. When you say, Sometimes oh, a life, slogan doesn't have to always land. You stand for something that it goes against maybe what is popular. True. Yeah, I do yeah, have no, I have, a, I have a... liberty and freedom. True. And if people in, in no one cares people... about liberty and freedom. Literally nobody does. Oh, that is I, not I, true. I, can I slide I, I, in I, for I, just a minute here? Oh, I, I want to I I get into something really quickly here. Because <sighs> I'm really interested in this. You know, I... Imagine, uh, you know, I, I know there's a handful of like weirdo libs here. Just imagine off the top of your head, your perfect candidate, your absolute perfect candidate that you think aligns with every single polling data point that you can imagine off the top That's of your head. Max, my dude. Um, I don't know what you're And about then they said defund the police. Would, would you vote against them? Do you think other voters would vote against them if they aligned with all these other things? Or do you think it's oh, this is something that's a part of a package deal because that's what political candidates are. They are a package deal. So, do you so think would you package single, a steaming do you pile think people of are garbage? Single issue, do you think people are single issue voters on this? 100% there are single issue voters and we can look at all the polling that supports this. Okay, hey, so see, here, here's I something I'm thinking, right? right now. So here, Mama, here's this. something from my own personal experience, right? And, you know, this isn't backed by any data, but I... I'd put money on this if I had to, is that the people who are against abolish the police are likely people who have to talk to Chud. don't have to interact have, or with you the have to talk to Dylan and Chud and Ernax. I'm not like, running it. And honestly, while, you know, I kind of want to win that population over, I'm not particularly interested in them. Like, I'm, I'm going to push for that whether I want whether they want it or not. I'm going to tell a little bit of an anecdote since we're all doing anecdotes right now. But I remember during the uh, 2020 Democratic primary when people were telling me like how important it was to uh, support Elizabeth Warren. And they were telling me like Elizabeth Warren, she's this amazing candidate. She like she understands the polling data. She's a wonk. Um, and I would say stuff like, yeah, she's like she's kind of an islamophobe and she's kind of an imperialist if you actually look at her like 
she she doesn't want to actually cut military funding. She wants to greenify the military. And people were like, oh, you know, if you actually look at the polling data, she, she that's exactly where people are. And she got third place in her home state. Sure, sure, Pink Like, I get you. She f- fucking spiraled out. I'm sorry. Like, I don't, I don't see where this actually comes from. Wait, what's yeah? What's what the it point sounds here? like is like you guys like to project your own feelings about things onto everybody else at large, despite <laughs> reality standing in in opposition to you. Yeah. Demon Mama, I just want to talk about this poll that you linked about like yeah, popularity of Deep sure. Fund, right? Yeah, because sure. I think that this illustrates the point I was trying to demonstrate earlier. Sure, go I'm for looking it. at the questions that they asked in this poll. And mm-hmm. what they're getting out with these questions are the nuanced to good faith interpretation of Deep Fund the police that I think we all agree with. God, I would hope every other lib agrees with like, just No, you know, I'm not listen, listen. I don't need to hear right? this fucking sanctimonious so, bullshit. We just talked about this. There's a thing called a slogan. When you say defund the police, that is the slogan. When you talk about the policies that go behind defund the police, that's what's being talked about. And as it turns out, people support that. And when you say defund the police, Oh, wow. It's almost like it opens a conversation to start talking about the policy. So this is the thing. So then here's the... No, no, no. Liberals are so... Listen, liberals are... Listen, libs are so addicted to losing in politics that they don't understand the difference between policy and between uh, a slogan that is effective at at getting to the soul of the matter. When you go out and you drop a... When you drop a legal... Listen, when you drop a legal document that's 500 pages long and you go, as you can see here, this reform will allow the police to uh, instead of wearing this and people go what the fuck are you talking about That's and then you go argument. but then you go wait a minute so 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 real quick here this is a little bit of behind the scenes stuff again you won't see this on the actual twitch stream but if you were to look at the uh the whereby chat room right now i asked for a poll that showed that voters were single issue voters on defunding the police or funding the police just and for what i got and what i got was a poll that said Oh, uh, one in six voters is a single issue voter on abortion. That's what I got. Yeah, because we were saying that there was Whoops. a lot of people that are Whoopsies. single issue voters. And that's the argument Daggers. that you took faith with. I can find a specific one on single issue police, but I figured I would just put the biggest voting block, which is abortion single issue yeah. voters. There are a ton of single issue voters in the United States. It just so happens that that was the easiest one that to pull up on the fly. Exactly. That one can be. Well, is what yeah. it sounded like you were saying. Wait, yeah, I have, okay, okay, hold on. I what I, I I barely talked to this aspect. So KFC, if okay. like this whole aspect of like aligning, like sure, right? So this is one aspect about a candidate that like people may overlook. But wouldn't we want to be as politically effective as possible? What is that not the goal? Especially when defund the police has only decreased in popularity and support. Wouldn't we want to come up with a better slogan or something more accurately represents our political gain? Do you have one? What? No, but I'm not a poli- Wait, wait, wait. wait did you so come you up don't with have one? I don't wait. necessarily have- I, Wait, wait, wait. I, wait, wait, wait a minute. So Hold on a second. But you're an advocate. You're a political I'm advocate. advocate. So I look like a- Do I look like a slogan maker, for listen, example? Listen, listen. Polar, polar. You're on a panel advocating about politics right now. Come on. If you had, if you had two options between um, abolishing the police or fixing the police, but you knew- that if you had to pick one and stick with it, you want, you'd want to go with the one that would actually be more likely to succeed. Which one would you pick? Or, the one that's no, more likely to choose oh, wait, their own on, choice to torpedo their own ideology. Right. Wait, hold on a second. Let me they give you an idea. Wait, 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 wait. Let me give you an idea. Ready? What about this? What about you push for the abolishment and then uh, you have politicians who can reform if you can't get the abolishment through. But you push for the thing that you actually want to win. Republicans okay, do this reform. all the time. So if, Re- right-wingers do this all the time. But yeah, libs don't yeah, fucking yeah, understand yeah. politics even in the so, slightest. So, hey, if, hold so on. I, 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 you push for the thing you want. You don't sell yourself short because, because you're afraid of Republicans. Else. Oh hold on. Chill. Okay. So if... You have the thing that you want to push for, but yeah. then you have, but you're also trying to reform the police and because that will get through. And then, you know, there's like, no, I mean, this what if, what if, wait, wait, wait a minute, hold on. We're going to go for the there comes that libbiness. There comes we're that lib cowardice reform, right? coming right in. Demon, lib demon. Cowardice. Okay. Please. So, sure, so sure. the, so the slogan hey, Andrew, good to see that you. you would go for could be fix the police, could be reform <laughs> the police. It could be all kinds of things that don't make it seem like you're trying to take away the police. And that's why the candidate that's actually going to win and the policies that are actually going to be in place aren't backed by someone who backs defund the police. They back on reforming the police. 
I don't know. Well, well, here's the thing. Listen, I got, a, I got a hot new slogan for you. Wait. Um, I'm uh I'm gonna get going in a moment, so uh so I I need to I need to just add this right is uh we live in a situation where there are only two parties, there are only two options on the table, right? And so when it comes to that, right? Here's the here's the real of it is whatever the Democrats say, people are going to vote for it at least in California because there literally is no other option. So yep. yeah, we can push for the fucking stars and be ambitious, okay? We don't have to fucking uh we don't have to 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 cut back on our ideas. There are more Democrats in this country than Republicans. We have the power, right? We do. When it comes election season, we will have the power and they we can are. put they might whatever be. we know, fucking want be. on the know. table. Nobody likes this guy at any level. No one like wait, right? Let's see. So push it's for the a little stars. Meme-y, Don't Victoria. be fucking spineless. Wait, 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 what are you talking about? Who? What, pe- what people? Wait, Where? Listen, listen. When? In the meantime, while you're pushing for slogans like, um, we should fix some of the problems. Fix the police? We Reform should... the police? Wait, hold sure. on. Let me, let me just get a slogan. Going. Abolish hold the on. police. Oh, 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 I have to I'm get sorry. Going. Are you too scared I have to let me talk? Going. You, you want them off? Come on. Derry. 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 I can't be in you. Okay. I gotta get going, Chud. Um, is there anything you want me serious. to do before it's I really go? Funny. Just shout yourself out. Okay. Um, listen, listen, listen. Go to the Bardic Interrogation YouTube page. Bardic Interrogation. Um, YouTube. and look at my video on Gramsci's Prison Notebook. That's that's a really good uh, video. Um, all cops are bastards, including whatever uh, bastard cop you're related to. Goodbye, everyone. Cinnamon. Have a good one, Doctor K. Nice getting to know you. Good night. Okay, Demon, you were speaking before Derry interrupted you. Yeah, uh, I think Splinter said that has to go Splinter's well. got to go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, hey, hey, Dr. K's I had a really savage. good time here. Um, I appreciate the talk with all of you. If any of you guys ever want to talk one-on-one, like, feel free to let me know. Um, I guess last little pitch, you know, if you liked anything I had to say, you can find me at Splinter's TW. Um, talk about politics and debate. As far as, like, today's topics, uh, I think the only thing I would like people to just keep in mind is recognize that slogans and the ideas behind them can pull differently. If the ideas behind your slogan are pulling well and the slogans pulling poorly, maybe you should change your slogan to more accurately reflect the ideas. But yeah, you all have a great night. Thanks for having me on. Thanks very much. I'm going to head out as well, Chud. Okay, no worries. Thank you very much for joining me. Appreciate it. The libs are beating their retreat. Uh, not gonna lie, Demon. Uh, Demon, I'm not even a lib, bro. Like, that's that's the best yeah, part. Yeah, dem sock. I'm a dem sock. That sock dem. But Listen, man, y'all, uh, y'all can have a nice here. night. Okay? Yeah. Bye bye, Polar. Bye bye. Well, you see, it doesn't matter if you're right of Stalin, you're a lib. So totally listen, true. Yeah, yeah. Known known Stalinist. Yeah, also, if you're left of Donald Trump, remember that. Yeah, true. I mean, I want to. I I generally like, like. If you call yourself a Dem Sock or a Sock Dem, a Social Democrat or a Democratic Socialist, if you genuinely believe that you are, I really have to encourage you, look up Olaf Palme. Look up the Meadner plan. That is the Social Democratic plan. That is the Democratic Socialist plan of that milieu. You should be familiar with it. Like, really, at base, at base level. Yeah, I don't think that's too well, much to ask. I actually looked up the Meaner plan and the Wiki- I got something different. I got a Wikipedia article called the Ren Meaner model. So I think that's what you should be asking people to look up instead, probably. So is that a dunk? Is that supposed to be like a dunk? Okay, buddy. Yeah, no. okay listen, we've got I, one. I'm just saying. We've got one more topic. We've got we've got one more topic to get into, okay? Um, and then and then we'll we'll bring these to a close. So the final. Hang on one sec. I'll just uh, bring it up here. So the final topic uh, we're going to be um, speaking about is um, will uh, Joe Biden be a progressive president? Okay. So, All right. I'll start. Uh, maybe I'll actually get like a moment to actually speak. Yeah, <laughs> Dari, you didn't get much chance last time. Sorry, sorry about that. Go ahead. No worries. I mean, I was mostly listening. <laughs> um, okay, but so there's, there's the super obvious first off. Usually if a Democratic candidate is the most recent candidate, they're probably going to be more progressive. But to give it a little bit more um, nuance to that and what that would actually look like and mean, um, 
particularly Biden is really good at building coalitions. And one particularly that should interest uh, the communist and socialist is the, uh, the joint task force between Biden and Sanders. And specifically, those things cover like healthcare, criminal justice, the economy, education, and immigration. Um, and all of those things are a lot of Sanders' proposals that actually are affecting it. And I can, I can get into details about every single one of those steps. Um, but I would say absolutely for sure. Yes. Um, yes. Biden's this is Dr. K's uh, Twitter. Yep, that's the one. Uh, I've got a question for Dari. Right, can ahead. we go through initial uh, opinions first, and then we can shoot our questions? Sure, sure, uh, sure. Yeah, just, yeah, sure, sure. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, I'll throw it over to you, Kentucky Fred Comrade. You, you give your initial statement, and then you can ask a question after that. Um, no, he's not going to be a particularly progressive president. Good question. Um, what we'll see is um, things will get, you know, marginally less bad over the course of the next four years. And then we will see the next little uh, fascist uh, tangent flare up. Um, and I think all you have to do for that is look at something like Simpson Bowles. If you know what Simpson Bowles is, then you know who Biden is. Yeah, I guess I'm going to say that uh, Biden is going to be the most progressive president we've ever had as a uh, person we've ever had for president. He's even going to be left of Obama, given his, um, I, I guess, party uh, stuff with, um, with uh, what's his name, uh, Sanders. And uh, if you don't go out and vote for Trump, then the whole country is going to turn into socialists. So. Okay. Can you um, give my opening statement? Yeah, yeah go ahead, Joe. Um, so I would just like to note before my opening statement, I'm glad that I got to spend so much time around uh, uh, four crazies, three of which are still here because Biden is not going to be a socialist, but I also don't think he's going to be not progressive at all. I would say it depends on how you define progressive. So it seems obvious that KFC and Demon Mama, their idea of progressive is progress in the right direction. So they're going to say he's going to be marginally, barely progressive. But I would say that there is a different definition of progressive. I would say you have moderate, liberal, and progressive within the Democratic Party. And these are the three main areas that you can look at and evaluate their policy to find out where they are. So I would say when it comes to most social issues, um, that Biden is going to be pretty progressive. He's either going to be progressive or on the border of liberal progressive. I would say in a lot of economic areas like climate change and healthcare, he's going to be a liberal. And then I would say there are also a probably 25% of economic issues. I think you could say he would be in the moderate camp, but for the rest of those, he'd probably be a liberal. So I'd say, uh, yeah, you know, when it I depends get chance, on what yeah. policy you're I'm talking not, about I'm and you know extreme, what area extreme, you're talking about. But I would say, generally speaking, he will be somewhat progressive. Okay. Demon? Yeah, um, you're right. I do believe that... Um, progressive depends on the right direction i would hate to progress in the wrong direction um that would be incredibly silly if you ask me maybe even regressive we almost have a word for it um but yeah uh, i don't know joe biden is he a progressive depends on what what that means progressive tends to me to be at least in, in common parlance tends to be a term that you use relatively um is he relatively progressive in comparison to donald trump well obviously um but is he progressive in terms of the democratic party not really. Um, he's like, on some issues, he's been pulled left by the fact that he's been um, put onto a, a uh, presidential campaign. And I don't really think it's a fair argument to say that he's the most progressive candidate in history, because again, um, I mean, that would be every Democrat by that measure, because we've continually been, you know, I mean, ideally, we've been moving towards um, greater civil civil liberties, which is generally what people refer to when they talk about being progressive. Again, it really depends on the words that you, uh, on, on your definition of progressive. I don't think that uh, Biden is like a super notably progressive um, candidate with a few exceptions. Um, I think that we are facing on the right. Um, I mean, again, I'll just signal to this something that's very prevalent, uh, prevalent to me. On this Monday morning, we had uh, a, the, the, the right-wing justices on the Supreme Court pushing that they wish to overturn the decision that allowed gay people to get married in this country. And on the left, we have a 
possibly mildly progressive answer in the form of Joe Biden? Is he better than Trump? Should you vote for him over Trump? Sure, but we've got to be able to do better than this. And Libs, you guys got to do better than this too, because you, you should be ashamed of yourselves that Biden was the best thing you could muster. It really speaks a, a, a mile of your of your worldview that the best thing that you could do was put Biden forward against Donald Trump, against Donald Trump, the guy who just stood on his balcony and did a dictator thing while 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 fucking uh, gasping for breath under the covid that definitely doesn't exist. That he sprayed into the faces of all of his working staff, 127 of which are now infected, while 200,000 Americans are dead. And you guys are like, yo, let's put Joe oh. Biden. He's a good answer. So, yeah. Yeah, I that's my my take on it. I think I Demon Mama. I think Demon Mama captured something that kind of crystallizes out like a lot of the disagreements that have happened over the course of this entire uh, clip conversation. It. Clip it, clip it, where it. Uh, Demon Mama said, "You know, yeah, okay, Biden's the most progressive candidate. Of course, hopefully, every candidate is the most progressive candidate." Well. I think that kind of crystallizes out the differentiation between uh, someone like myself and Demon Mama with with a lot of the rest of you, where it's like, okay, you want to talk about what polls well, what's what's the right answer to a question? Okay, so abolish the police does not poll well. Let's you know fix the police that polls well. Oh shit. Well, okay, you have uh -oh. an answer to that if we actually did it. Oh, okay, cool, Gina. Thank well, you. I appreciate that's that. That's it. It's done. It's complete. We did an edit reached last the night end of, of the, history. Um, We've managed the Trump the segment from last night. Whereas we are on a we are on a a thought process, an ideological trajectory of well, how do we push things further <laughs> after that? Maybe maybe you get your wish and you you know, more power more power to you. But we are on the trajectory of okay, that's the battle that was won at that time. How do we push it further after that? It's looking likely, Cook. Okay, I was, um, I'd actually like to address that because that point that Demon Mama made that hopefully each um, candidate is more progressive, I actually want to push back on because, you know, I actually think there, it, there is a way that That's you can chance. measure these three areas of the Just Democratic odds. Party. So I would not say Biden is the most progressive. Like I would say on economics, it's pretty easy to identify who is a progressive. Like I'd say someone like David Pakman is probably um, a good idea of like the middle of the progressive pact in the Democratic Party. So I would say someone like LBJ, FDR and Obama are probably going to be to the left of Biden on economic issues. I'm sorry, this just sounds like fantasy nonsense. Uh <laughs> Wait, do you disagree with that statement about David Packard? Yeah, it doesn't you... sound like you have any coherent definition of what you're talking about with regard to left. I mean, it, it, when, when, when you're talking about progressive, what people generally mean when we're talking about America, they're talking about social issues. Because the the, the on, on economic issues, there's nobody, the entire Democratic Party is not even close to progressive. If by progressive you mean left, generally what is meant, what is progressive, what has been used as progressive in the United States is a term to refer to liberals who are particularly particularly um, focused on s civil liberties. That's what progressive means here. Now, I don't know. You could come up with your own definition of progressive that means whatever you want, but then we're back at square one again. I also want to add Pac-Man is, is a little Islamophobic freak, and I can't stand the guy. What? I can't speak to that. But... Since when is he Islamophobic? I'm, I'm not getting into this argument. With he's you. he's just going to reference <laughs> something about... Um... No. He's just gonna I'm throw. Literally not gonna get into this argument with you. Because like, there's nothing to substantiate it. He had a producer who oh, who so had sorry. like who had like a Muslim parent and a Christian who had like a Muslim dad and a Christian mom. So I I mean I I'd be surprised that he's Islamophobic now. Okay, I'm gonna save that clip. Literally Excited. any David Pakman video on Ilan Omar. <laughs> that. Listen, I mean, this sounds like right. neither here nor there. What a but base take. All I'm going to say you is... Take that like, with you back to the Stone Age. I don't, I don't have any evidence either way, but I also just don't think that saying that, like, David Pakman, one of David Pakman's interns had a mom who was Muslim is, like, a particularly good way to defend Pakman. <laughs> like, I'm just going to say... Well, no, a little he had funny. an old producer who, like, if you go back... Because I actually used to watch him when I was Twitch in middle school. Twitch might be fucking school. up a little bit. Mine's fine. Um, I'm and, got, like, I've got the beginning of high right school. Now, so if you go and watch some of his from, like... In 2015 and 2016, he had a producer named Lewis, and I know like um, one of Lewis's uh, parents was from uh, Iran and was a Muslim, and then the other parent was Christian, and they ended up raising him like secular. 
Um, so. Shadows, would you describe yourself as a super fan of David Pakman? Uh, no, none of this I more actually, because I, right? like, when I first got into, like, internet politics and, like, watching the news on YouTube, I was actually um, pretty left-wing, so I started watching, like, David Pakman and Kyle Kalinske, and then, you know, I would say, like, summer between uh, junior and senior year of um, high school, I, like, fell down the libertarian rat rabbit hole, started watching a shit ton of Milton Friedman, Thomas Sowell, Friedrich Hayek, and then I sort of, like, moderated back to the center, and I, like, you know, because I just grew up in a super progressive area, and I never really, like, heard any of these viewpoints, and so, okay, like, I fell Twitch down this sort up. of rabbit so hole of libertarianism, but, you know, it eventually you know i had there to you know, stop issues. and view both sides of this critically and think about you know yeah what I, are my values I'm getting it like, now too, what so is it important is to me side. and i came to like the so conclusion of, like well, i will say this i will say this shadow like you know I, this is a you know it's a panel discussion it's always a little bit of a clusterfuck no matter who's moderating it true but mm -hmm. um, that's true you know if you want to have a future conversation about that i would be more than open to having it with you because that stuff that actually that kind of stuff actually does interest me i've i've been in that milieu i understand it pretty well so you know mm -hmm. if you ever want to have like an in-depth nah, conversation it about it i'm open to it. about like rabbit holes and like finding your actual ideology uh well, you know that kind of stuff uh libertarianism uh the intersection of libertarianism and socialism and all that type of stuff i would be more than open to those types of conversations what were we talking about again okay Cool. Um, so, um, David Packman's sorry for comrades, your, your camera keeps freezing. You might need to leave and come back in the whereby. All right, give me a sec. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Um, okay, cool. Where well, were we? I, the, <clears throat> actually, it was Kentucky Fried Comrade and Demon Mama. They had a question, and then we kind of spiraled out since then. Um, everyone seems to get lost. Um, there was some question, and then we were doing introductions, and then KFC was doing his introduction, and that's where it was laugh left off. But he had a question for me when I was talking about the the Bernie Sanders or the uh, Biden Sanders Joint Task Force was um, no, wait, where I left off. Like way before that was when we, but that was before we talked about uh, what does progressive really mean, and yeah. So no, that was in our opening statements, and then I had to give mine, and that's where, I don't know. If he doesn't want to respond, that's fine. But wait, that's wait, just but I don't know what's laughing. the question again? No, Can I you just don't remember. Yeah, I don't sorry. Remember okay. I just don't remember. <clears throat> yeah, so what is, what is progressive okay. economy? When you say progressive, you said specifically social issues, but then you said something like liberals don't have a progressive economy position. Was that is that not accurate to what you said? Wait, I don't know what you mean That's by progressive. Oh, I, I know what you're saying when she was responding to me. She was like talking about how like um progressives are mainly focused on like social issues and civil liberties. And that yeah. like, you know, the idea of a progressive um on the economy yeah. isn't yeah, really I, much of a thing in the Democratic Party yeah, yeah, or I, I guess a very small minority. I just wanted to elaborate. That was her actual position so I could address yeah, yeah, yeah. it. Um, sure, go for it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, so, that's, that's um, my position. I don't really think that we use the term here in the United States. We don't really use the term progressive to refer to, um, to any sort of economic policy besides maybe like you might say like, Oh, uh, when, when perhaps some people mean like, Oh, Bernie Sanders wants to tax people slightly more and that's progressive. But generally when people say progressive, um, you know, I've heard libertarians, um, refer, refer them to themselves as, uh, as progressives because they believe in like gay marriage and stuff. That's usually the context that I've heard this term used in. It's become yeah, kind of an empty phrase. Yeah, that's actually what I was going to say in response to that definition. Like, you know, is like if they're on? more my focused on, on yes. like increasing yes, or progressing towards Should more be. social liberties, I so. then I would say I'm I'm pretty damn Can fucking progressive by that definition. Y'all should but, be able to hear me. You know, I consider myself a liberal, more specifically a neoliberal. Well, I, supporting gay rights, I mean, wait, do you, uh, you describe exactly yourself as a progressive neoliberal? these days? It's pretty, it's pretty standard. So, I mean, that, that's kind wait, of wait. Wait, I'm sorry. What did you say? Well, I mean, I guess now. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I, feel I, like wanna, that's I just want to hear what Derry Derry had to say because I missed a segment of it. It like the stream jumped for a second. So, if I could just hear what you said. Shit, I'm not sure which part you missed. Um, but I was gonna say that um, get. Gay hey, issues I'm here. are I can pretty hear you I can standard right now for know, being progressive. Bit. Even if you do poll people on the right, people who aren't supposed to be progressive in any way, um, even they favor gay rights pretty pretty uh, dominantly. Um, so, depends what you mean. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. I was going to say, I think that you might be like, are we talking about like equal adoption there. rights? Are we talking about should they be a protected class? Like a lot of Republicans disagree with that. Um, and I would say when you were saying progressive, I know you meant like Democrat. Like, yes, most Democrats are all overwhelmingly on board with the idea of like, you know, they should have equal adoption rights to straight people. Same. They should be a protected class. They should have these workplace protections that come with being a protected class and whatnot. But um, I would say that like progressive, if we're going to use a demon's definition of like, um, you know, it has to do with social issues. I would say being a progressive has to do more with like trans rights now. And, you know, like, um, yeah. you know, trans, well, um, transitioning yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, whatever age. Something that doesn't really, it's not a big point. Okay. <laughs> we can vaguely understand what we're talking about when something is progressive. Well, yeah. I, but it, I do it think should there's be... like a, I do think that it's a, a, a and t- a complete, like almost laughably false notion, the idea that the right wing is on board with most progressive reforms. They literally are not. Like, I mean, we're talking Yeah, that's why we're going to lose. We're going to lose Roe v. Wade. Way. We might lose Obergefell. Like, yeah, that, I would say that's, I would say that's pretty regressive. Um, yeah. Well, true, yeah. this actually kind of exposes a second layer. And I'm, I'm, I'm loosely coupling this to what I talked about earlier when I was talking about, uh, uh, me and Demon Mama versus this kind of overall concept. And when we talk about progress and we talk about presidents where it's like, oh, yeah, well, theoretically, hopefully Biden is the most progressive person because otherwise, like, what what the hell are we doing? But I think this exposes a second layer of things, because I remember you bringing this up earlier, Derry, where you brought up like, well, you know, one of the strengths of Biden is that he can work together with other people. And I think that is a misunderstanding of political power as it exists in the United States right now. When you look at the constant, like when you look at what constitutes the uh, Republican Party, when you look at people like Mitch McConnell, uh, the idea that like Biden becomes president and Mitch McConnell is like, well, now I've got to work with with Joe Biden because, you know, he's president now. No, he doesn't have to do that. He is going to be won't. the he exact won't. same type of person he's been the entire time. And he is going to do everything within his power because the Republican Party, um, and I, I, I have to say, I kind of respect this about them. They have their eye on the prize where Democrats do not. They understand political power. That's why they've been stacking the courts this entire time. I do not think... The Democratic Party, I do not think neoliberals, whatever you want yeah, to call yourself, so but I do not right, think though. you have he's a right. cohesive ideological correct. agenda that gets anything done. I think you have a lot of theories about what's going to be nice and what makes sense on like a, a bar graph or something, but it does not actually translate to political power that gets things done. Well, I mean, and and the entire wait, 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 hold on, wait, wait. Well, what? I don't know what ideology you're vaguely referencing to, but there's been zero things communist done, especially on a large uh, nationwide scale. So no, they have. have it's just been catastrophic. And so, aside from that, talking about places where Biden has coalition built, uh, first off. Left unity is something that <laughs> it's hard to come by, and hopefully we get more of it. And it seems like um, both come by Bernie circles, and maybe. Biden were really good at it. All the moderates put their money behind Biden. Um, you know who Brad Long is. And then, and then when it went to Biden and um, Sanders, yeah, the uh, got they ended the up working States. together. Um, and so constantly, even as far as reaching to the right wing, even uh, – so it's something that Martin Luther Biden King was still a socialist pushes to this day, like on his Twitter and like hoping that, you know, Trump would be OK and hope, you know, taking negative ads down for the time that he was uh, hospitalized. Like the guy uh, can't put together some coalition. Sure. Well, let Whatever, me just Derek. I just want to touch hey, on I, one I, thing. I, I, well, hold on. Hold on. Just okay. one second. Sure, Mama. Sure, I want to sure. get this out. Sure. Uh, Derry. And I'll ask this to Shadows as well. Do you know who Brad DeLong is? Like. Brad DeLong, you said? Yeah, Brad DeLong. No, not. Do you, Derry? Do you know who Jim Clyburn is? Yes, I do. So Brad DeLong you know was is? an economist. Well, Brad DeLong was an economist during the Clinton administration and the Obama administration. He is actually right up your guys' alleyway. If you were to look at Brad DeLong's history, he is True. you guys in a nutshell. And he posted, uh, he gave this interview in Vox. I'm posting it in the chat. I really 
encourage everybody to read it because it's fantastic. But it was basically him saying, we misunderstand the Republican Party. The Republican Party is out Dr. for Alden blood. <laughs> and the Democrats, however we want to constitute them, are not. And that is a vast misunderstanding of the political dynamic. I would encourage you to read it. I'm going to post it in the chat right now. <laughs> so wait, wait. So the, the assumption is that I don't know that the Republican Party is a death cult. Is that what you're implying very mistakenly? Uh, yes. And I okay. think I you don't even sure know. I don't know. even think you know how like badly you misunderstand it. Well, I think you would have implied a lot, like this idea that communism has any effectiveness. Is, well, wait, wait, one. hold on so a second, about, though. About That's what concept. I want to address. And then about I me, waited. I example, waited. Listen, wrong. listen, I waited. So, I mean, now, eventually, you'll say something right, but it hasn't been for a while. Now, listen, I waited, but I just want to say something. The idea that lefties, I mean, you could say the word communists, whatever, but if you want to say socialists in the United States haven't accomplished anything, I don't know, man, there's this weird person I remembered that I think you guys invoked earlier called uh, Martin Luther King, a, uh, a a avowed socialist. Oh, let's see. Uh, who was it who won the uh, the 40-hour work week in, in America? Oh, right. It was communists pushing for that endlessly. Oh, yeah. It's almost like many, many figures throughout history have been communists and socialists pushing for actual change in the United States that you take advantage of and enjoy today. In fact, I mean, hell, even FDR was getting pulled to the left by socialists. It's really strange. Like all these really historical moments that are like then later gobbled up by the Democrats and said, no, no, they were actually secret centrists and they downplay this. And then there's like, you know, this whole thing that oh, it was literally illegal to be a yeah. communist in it the United exactly States. Cool and at, we're at the point. Oh, listen, Martin listen, Luther I know. King. I know you're, you're yeah. itching at the butt. Holy. The Thank, but. No, it's just hold on. It's a factual mistake and you're wrong. Oh, OK, KSC sure. Yep, go for it. Talking about how much polling for him didn't matter. We, I didn't bring it up, sorry, and neither what? did Shadows. Just okay, continue. I'm yeah. Sorry, wait, what? Well, actually, I so I would like to respond wait, to that what? because well, yeah, I mean, I just think that it's 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 really it's like a uh, it's just really dishonest and ahistorical, and the fact that you're trying to move on from it real quick just shows that you just actually weren't being honest at all with that statement. I mean, that's I sort of part of the course of this discussion. But all right. I I like to respond to some so of the wrong. things it's you were so wrong that la uh, what was it last week? You had the Trump administration uh, re-upping. Uh, banning immigration from people who were members of communist parties. Yep. Like, and they didn't they, make they any mention of fascists. Week. Weird. Yeah, yeah, October October 2nd, they um, they expanded a bill to do that. Yeah. Yeah, kind of. So are you saying the communist even... parties that have, have been full of good people that we should let in the country? People just talked at once. Oh, yeah. Tons. Yeah, no, I, I objectively agree with that. There's objectively many people who belong to um, communist parties all across the world who are great people. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Fuck! Do you realize that everyone who's been involved with these groups wait, have been? Wait, yeah. Does, does wait, anyone um, agree with Dima? Demon right now? Wait, wait. Does I, nobody believe that there are members of? I'm, I'm gonna about to. If you, if you agree, if you, if you disagree with me, I'm about to blow the fuck out of you. Cause just, just go ahead. Just, just go ahead and tell me whether you wait, think. No, no, that no calm down. I don't think anyone actually disagrees with that. Well, I mean, the guy, so, uh, who's, uh, the guy is not clear, on camera. Like, so what you're saying. Is, Please, if you hear someone else speaking, just wait for them to finish speaking first. So, does anybody does anybody Shining agree? Cat. United States, let's go. So, to be so, I, I just want to clarify the question. I guess so. You're saying that there's no bad people inside of communist parties that should have been banned from this. No, no, she's asking, wait, do you I think, the are opposite. there good people within communist yeah, of course, there's good people in yeah, so you would, wait, so you would agree then, you would agree then that it's an absolute injustice to ban all members of any communist party from immigrating to the U.S. That would be deeply, inju that would be deeply it unjust. Depends I, on whether or not there are exemptions wait. to let people in who are members, but not actually like, you know, high level people doing mm, bad things. Weird. Like, sure, it, it depends mm, on. Kind of fucked. I, I don't know how far, far party affiliation goes in a lot of these countries, but a lot of them, if you're born in there, if you want to do anything, you're part of the Communist Party. See China. Is the average member of the Communist Party of China bad? No, probably not. Do you agree but there's a Muslim. Enough it would ban all Chinese. Uh, yeah. No, yep. I think it's real dumb. Ban all Chinese Why? people. I disagree with it. Um, I would so I would like to say my response to that is. I would say the uh, flat ban of anyone part of any communist party internationally 
is very dumb. And I would say that probably goes against the First Amendment because we have this thing, this thing called freedom of speech in the U.S. But I would say if you are, you know, vetting someone and screening someone and, you know, if you like, I don't know, I, like I'm not a fucking immigration lawyer, so I don't know how the process works. But if you were to make a pro con column that would help people or hurt people, someone's chances from getting into the U.S., I would say it's totally justified to put member of ex communist party in the con column. Like I would, I would rather not have immigrants who are communists in the U.S. I would rather have immigrants who are like you know, capitalists. Well, rather, uh, uh, Chud. Uh, so I, I want to make an appeal to Chud real quick. I've got a another roundtable question that I kind of want to ask everybody. Wait, oh, let me fin- let me, hold on. This is important yeah. to the topic. Um, so, okay. go, Darry, go on, and then talk about more. Okay. Okay. So, um. As far as like the immigration process, you have to give an oath of allegiance when you immigrate. Um, and then um, I can actually pull it up. The USCIS policy says communist or other totalitarian party. Um, so that's just part of the, the immigration. And so, but there's a huge difference between um, religion and political affiliation. They're both bullshit. Um, I'd say one more than the other. Just look at as it as it was a commentary. I mean, but you, so, you think... Okay, Kentucky Fried Corn, go ahead and ask your question. So this is a roundtable question. You know, it's a simple answer. I, I do have a follow up to it, but I want to ask everybody here. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go based off of uh, Chud's screen. You know, shadows, demon, dairy, noon, noopy. Um, who, which candidate during the Democratic primary, or which candidate generally speaking? Uh, did you think it had the best immigration policy? I would say probably Andrew Yang. Um, I think, you know, he, as someone who is um, a second generation American, someone who is the son of immigrants, you know, he, I remember he mentioned on the debate stage um, how, you know, his dad grew up in a peanut farm yeah, in no Southeast worry, Asia. And he, and then he said, now his son is running for the president of the United States. That is the American dream. That is 1000% true. That was a super base statement when he said that, because that is the American dream that you can, you know, go from this situation from, you know, you're a kid in a peanut farm in Southeast Asia in what is considered, you know, global poverty to living in the U.S. and having a kid Sorry, for running for the president, Apologies. the it's highest Comcast. office in the land. Like, yeah, that's 100 percent the American dream. And I would say he understood the importance of immigrants. And I would say his um, views on illegal immigration story policy were, right, right. Um, you know, the best combination, which is, you know, you have a very um, liberal slash progressive because we were talking about this, but you have a very liberal view on providing amnesty. But then you go very moderate when it comes to how do we enforce immigration in the future which is we try to um, actually monitor the border we try and you know minimize the amount of illegal immigrants but we still provide amnesty we still provide refuge to people who come to the border so i think uh, my go-to is standards but i think actually his immigration policies was actually uh less progressive than a few others and you asked specifically about immigration Um, and i know bernie's actual protectionist in this area um so shit yeah apologies actually i want to say i want to say warren was actually better on immigration hey. than bernie was um fuck but it's it's been a while since the the primaries and there's been so much going on uh demon mama yeah i think i probably would have agreed most with uh gravel from what i recall but god it's been a while since i've gone over everybody's immigration platform <laughs> besides knowing fucking biden versus trump but yeah i think it would probably have been gravel's policy but i fucking can't remember all the details all right well i'm i don't know uh noopy did you want to get on on this or rage uh, uh, yes. no, uh go ahead yeah so i would say probably bloomberg or yang probably had my vote for immigration all right was somebody well, making trans um, jokes i don't think anybody was fair enough uh i'm going to link somebody again in oh oh your family did okay yeah sorry about it it's it's not on me um it's it's steven robbins uh he does a podcast sorry he's a, an actual immigration attorney really um, sorry I, I you know won't lie uh somebody very close to me um have been you know dealing with immigration stuff uh and and uh he's helped them quite a bit 
Um, I trust him because he is, again, an actual immigration attorney. He goes through this on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, I mean, there's immigration actual, attorneys that want to get everybody thrown actual, out. This is an actual job. And so if you want to learn about it, I would suggest listening to him. Uh, he's now, an there's, guy. there's plenty of lawyers whose job is to get immigrants thrown out of the country. That doesn't mean they have a good say in the matter. I mean, there are a lot of also people who have the job of helping, you know, companies yeah, bring in bad. people. I could try well, restarting it. Let me put it, it this way. I, yes, about I, imagine, I imagine a lot of you do not know anything about how the immigration system works. You're right. I, I have actually, no idea. How no, I, I actually know a fair amount, especially on the legal side. I can't even assume some shit about me, dude. What the fuck, dude? I'm an immigrant, but please tell me how I, I, know, how I me didn't too. experience sorry. what I did. Go oh, on. Oh, really? Wait, yeah. hold on. Um, I'm, I'm do you mind me asking? Where? I'm Iranian. Oh. Dope. And my father was deported on top of that, too. So I, I have no experience about this process. Please tell me about it. And oh, don't be well, actually, I, I want to say my condolences <laughs> about your dad. But also, you know, I'm super glad you are here and not, you know, in Iran being oppressed by a theocratic yeah. government. So. Yeah, I had a lot of my family ended up uh, having to escape. And so I got family in Germany. I, I got family all over the place. Well, I hope the best for all of them. And you. Thanks. That's, that's not what I was going for. It's just, please drop the condescension. We'll absorb it. No, no, I have nothing but condescension. I really, I don't have much else. Like, I really don't find a lot of this stuff that entertaining uh, because I just find a lot of it, like, kind of masturbatory. I don't think a lot of people listening here actually know how the immigration process works. So I would rather they listen to an immigration attorney explain it to them. You can, you know, you can I'll talk keep, about I'll your, your after. issues yeah. all you want. Yeah. I thought you asked about a platform specifically, not just like someone who has commentary. But you asked oh, about, yeah. this, you asked this about a is killing democratic right primary, right? Actually hurting me. Yeah. Yeah. So not, I thought you were talking about specifically someone with a platform. Well, I would, I would like to add on to what Derry mentioned, you know, like as if I understand nothing about immigration. I actually do. Um, I actually had for the first 10 years of my life, which is a, exactly half of my life, of you know, I had a babysitter who was actually an illegal immigrant. And um, my dad actually swore her in as a citizen um, within the past decade um, because my dad is actually a federal judge and my dad actually deals with naturalization all the time. He helps people give the oath. He helps people become citizens, you know, on a yearly basis. So I've actually learned a lot about the immigration process from him as well as people who have immigrated here illegally, whether it's someone I knew because they raised me or people I knew in high school. So the purpose of that question, was it not to discuss immigration platforms or was it to a certain point just to hear us out? Your roundtable question, KFC. Oh, sorry, I missed your question. I was, I was reading something. Yeah, so the purpose of your question wasn't to discuss immigration platforms. It yeah, was an ulterior it. motive. I hate those ads. Yeah. Oh, most of what I do has an ulterior motive. Oh, that makes talking to you very difficult. <laughs> That's so fine. I have or a question for you, Kentucky Fried Comrade. So sure. uh, how, how did you like get your name? I guess if you wanted to like go back to like the Stone Age, why are you using like branding from like a big mega corporation? Is that just like irony or like what's the? No, you nailed it. Not there you bad. go. But it's pretty good. Yeah. You're yeah. not from Kentucky. I'm really. Confused. No, I actually I am. Double entendre then. What, what, Anything what, else on that now? one? Um, this feels <laughs> no, like no. Feel it was like just we... a question from my chat, and I was actually curious. So, like, some names are like pretty funny, and like I like to know people's like origin names, I guess. But some of them, like Noopy Tunes, like I, I've got no idea on that one, like either. But you know, he's the moderator and not part of this panel, so I didn't want to interrupt and drag him into this. So, you probably consider yourself a comrade. So, I guess the next question is: Do you fry anything? I mean, is there? A, is it just? It might fix the bug. Someone know. in chat asked, are you fried? Sorry about it all. No, okay. I mean, I eat plenty of fried foods. There you go. He, well, he there, you go. Go. there you go. There's your, there's your answer. So is, is Biden progressive or not then? That's what we're supposed to be talking about. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what we were talking about. I'm sorry. I've been lost for about So we were defining now. progressive, progressive socially and or economically as far as the U.S. is concerned. Um, and you can even add a metric between using former presidents uh, not relatively, but absolute to what a standard today would be. Uh, it's as not just you, Yates. If 
Does that definition work for you, or would you like to adjust it? Oh, Ronald Reagan. I like Ronald Reagan. Sorry, I would say... Oh, no. Go ahead, Derry. Oh, fuck. I cut out? Um, I said... Um, so we, as we were defining progressive, and we can either... It'd probably make most sense to like agree on something there. First off, is like what is progressive. So I would say it's more an absolute definition than relative. Um, like, is FDR more progressive in his era than a Biden would be progressive in our era? So I think overall, more progressive yes. than his president. Um, but that yeah, would that be works. relative. That would be relative, though. You said. Sure. You said not relative, but it is. That is that it would be relative if we were talking about who well, was progressive okay. based on their era. And if let, that's let's the just case, say let's just say FDR say plus five progressive points, yeah. right? But Biden would be plus two progressive points because sure. he doesn't diverge as much. Based on what? Yeah. I, that's just literally arbitrary just to show you sure. what I meant. Okay. Well, yeah. I can I would say that you can define progressive both relatively and non relatively, because I would say on economics it just it really just means that you're to the left of the liberals in your party so really? you could either de define it relatively or non-relatively so I don't know. you know um, i don't i don't meet you know how who, like are, wait, well, describe themselves as progressives and then have like a left of lib average um economic policy like that's the thing i just have never i've never seen progressive used um to describe somebody with like economically left positions it's almost always like they're a capitalist at the end of the day and they have right yeah so then if that's the like if that's the you know if that's the measure then i mean i don't know like like biden is kind of progressive like he has a couple of things going for him he says he's going to support gay marriage that's pretty good um he's definitely more progressive than trump absolutely i'd tell you that in a minute yeah. obviously but mm -hmm. i mean then I other people he was that. running against no way he wasn't more progressive than than I mean, Bernie. He wasn't more progressive than than Jay Inslee. Yeah. He wasn't more progressive than than uh, than. I mean, I don't know about uh, Yang. I don't actually know where to place him. Um, but he wasn't more progressive than Gravel. <laughs> that's for sure. I mean, let's like it's a very you know you can kind um, of do a basic analysis. Is Biden here progressive? Is the like, topic. Okay, We've gotten off a little compare, bit. We're towards the end of it. But I'm going to do a politics uh, stream for a little bit. Compare what was on this. offer with FDR to biden you've got the new deal uh created social security created the public works program created unemployment created a whole host of i don't know what happened to Dylan. basic attributes of what makes the united states livable you look at uh lyndon johnson created a uh, medicare um yeah it's live shit again Chud something bought that out. just makes yeah, the united got, states on a bare Chud. minimum livable yeah of what course. does of course joe author, biden course. have on offer what what is it? Like you just want to know some Wait. of these policies? I can list off a bunch, I guess. Wait, hold on. I, I I something stopped me about what you said, KFC. I mean, maybe I'm re remembering wrong, but I believe LBJ created Medicaid, right? Instant. Pretty sure Wait. Social Wait. Security and Medicare was FDR, and then Medicaid was LBJ. This is why Unless I said LBJ was Medicare and yeah, Medicaid. Yeah, this has been a while. I, mean, I'm, I, like, I might be misremembering. Well, but, but he was that's why that's off so topic. Was I. That's why I was depressed all fucking night. That's why night. that was the bad way to have this conversation. And it'd be a lot more sensible to say like Biden he came out was more was He was doing better than today. Trump. <laughs> Just like, well, no. If that's the bare minimum, is Biden more progressive than Trump? Sure. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's well, the... We all do. Any of us disagree on that? Sure. Like the idea here is okay. Sure. I you know here. Here's my grand prediction, Derry. It was so good. I think Biden's going to win. And yeah. so I'm not that interested in promoting Biden. I live in California. California mm -hmm. is going to Biden no matter what. So I'm not that worried about it. What I'm worried about is pushing people for the next fight, for the future. How are we going to make things better after that? What are going to be the nodes of if you got to go, you got to go. You can always catch the on. activism. Take it easy. What do we do then? Sure. Those are good conversations to have. And I hope that uh, they those conversations result in actual action that results in things uh, effectively happening that are more progressive. I mean, I would hope Biden so, does. too. But surely you can understand if, if the where... question. If, I, I'm sorry, but if the question literally just is, will Biden be? Hey, thank you for the gift. Yeah.
Thanks up, Marinara. Deeply appreciated. Yeah, sure. oh, Thank can, you so no, much. That was, conversation. that was a metric. Thank we're you we're very a much, scaling Marinara. issue here. So Trump is obviously someone that isn't progressive. He's okay. <laughs> so we have somebody all right. who Biden, at least in comparison to that's Trump. My, that's my I, I said that as something is, that mostly. obviously the He's whole point was to get you to issues, not disagree, to but to agree so you can move on. And we can dig in a little bit more, like I can say now. I would, would you say Sanders is more progressive than Biden? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I, cool. I think we can so, all agree that our answer to this issue would be it depends, and then we right, all use our who's own more progressive, separate Warren definition. or Sanders? Well, I, I was going to say like you know we all have we would all uh, say um it depends, and then using the definition yeah, we have at that least was for the four I of was, us, I will agree with we would you use our that, definition. Yeah, I agree. Uh, we put it out there Byron and then we say by this soon? definition, yes, he is progressive. No, he isn't. He's barely progressive. Um, like KFC and Demon Mama, that's what you guys are saying. You know, I gave my definition. I said, I think generally he'll be moderately progressive. Gary, you had your answer. You think he will be progressive. Um, and then there's just Rage Pope all alone in the corner saying he will be the most progressive candidate um, president ever. Yeah, he did. Kind of he used it for a good If time. we did like an absolute value, then I would say, yeah, that's that was what I opened with, is that he's going to be the, the most progressive candidate he's going to have overall his things that he's going to advocate for are going to be more progressive than previous candidates but i feel like that's always like the given like almost any democrat would have been that um yeah maybe i don't know i think it's a i, I do think it's a hard uh, a hard sell at this point um i think a lot of people look at the dems and they see um, more of the same while the right is just absolutely catapulting itself directly into uh, fascism um, and saying, yeah, we're going to stand still on this moving train to me seems like a, um, a very, very big risk and also something that the Dems are um, by and large underestimating as a force for their own electoral losses. Um, they, you know, I don't know. There's, there's a lot of, uh, I mean, I don't know. Some of the things that Biden does, again, this, if we're comparing to Trump, obviously it's an easy sell that Biden's great. But beyond that, it's like, Jesus. And like it's a scale that I, was to yeah, help. Yeah, yeah, right. But, but I'm just saying, like, if we're going to compare him to Trump, that's fine. But, like, among when we're discussing among like not considering right wingers he's he's got a lot of things he could improve on and also we have to ask if his tactics are actually effective for for landing progressive change whether or not he is himself progressive i don't know what he is personally um he might be but the thing is is that so far what we've seen is that the the democrats seem to be completely unable to win anything for the people of america right now they've been completely stonewalled on nearly every front they've been beaten in the courts they've been they've been completely stonewalled in the senate they can't seem to get Do donald trump to stop even on the most egregious things you can imagine like him parading around and just just coughing covid into the faces of everyone around him yeah the, the democrats haven't been able to do anything they've been doing nothing except for saying we can put biden in instead of trump maybe if you all rally together behind him and pretend that he's the best and it's like, Wait. that's the best that you can get in the face of ab of abject fascism on the side of the Republicans? That's what we get? That's why I say that. I mean, I'm a leftist. That's why I pull am pulling the Democrats left because I don't want to fucking lose this country to fascism. But a lot of libs just sit back and go, well, Biden, he's technically the most progressive ever, even though his answers aren't actually going to do anything uh, or aren't going to do enough. I shouldn't say they're not going to do anything. They'll certainly do something. But they're not going to I do enough to respond to the right. Just, wait, wait, just wait, to wait, jump wait. off, just to, sorry, sorry, oh, Gary, I, I, I gotta. The, the, the commie side or whatever can't have like a, a 30 minute speech every single time I get, you know, one minute. Yeah, yeah, um, 30 minutes, all right. Yeah, well, you guys, yeah, you guys go back and forth and time adds up. So, um, yeah, so I, I don't understand what you guys would even want to happen. So we've got things that are on the board for discussion are things like uh, every little bit. So as far as immigration goes, there's progressive policies to get more people in to, to um, keep like the dreamers protected. Um, let's see, there's an, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, uh, dealing with ice and obs, on, an obs button and like a panel for them, um, per, uh, protections on like 700,000 illegal okay. immigrants, Bye, like just, just an immigration. Like there's a, a whole list of policies that I, I don't, sure. besides, besides open borders, like you can't really get too much more progressive. Okay. So you're, you're kind of missing the forest for the trees here for a second. Um, which, you know, sure. Yes. 
I, I, there's all kinds of policies that I would love. Yes, I would. I would absolutely love open borders. I am going to finish my statement now. Um, where you're missing the forest for the trees here is you are actually buying into the notion that uh, that Biden tried to sell uh, that if he gets elected, uh, it's the the same notion that Barack Obama tried to sell a, a few years ago, where he said the fever is going to break. And, you know, if Biden wins, the fever is going to break. The Republicans are stop, going to stop being obstructionist. They haven't, and they never will. They're going to work with him because Joe is such a nice guy. Yep. And they're all going to be, you know, they're all, all going to live in a bipartisan fantasy. And I'm here to tell you, no. It's not going to They happen. are in it to win it. You've got a list of policies. Sure. The people who represent you in power do not represent a unified ideological front. Republicans do. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the situation that you can I ask you something uh, about that statement, KFC? Sure. Do you think that might be because the Democratic Party is too big tent? Do you think maybe it'd be better if they broke off into a Lib Dem party and a Labor party? Do you think maybe that might help? If the Liberals had a party and the Progressives had a party? No, because they, they would all just get slammed by the Republicans. Yeah, no, I I actually agree with Rage Pope on that. I, I don't think that would be a good idea. That's true. I think you would need a complete reconfiguration of, you know, how uh, that how like politics is worked. You'd need like a, a parliamentary system uh, coupled with, you know, stuff like um, uh, what's it called? Uh rank choice voting and stuff like that you yeah, need a I whole think we like, reconfig one. like i think you need a reconfiguration of how politics is done in the united states but in the short term in the here and now no i don't think that's a good idea yeah, yeah so no, i i agree with that. Painted regarding the, your response to me is that here's a whole list of policies and they won't get through and at the same hand you're like i have all this much more progressive policies I want to get through. And for some reason, you think the more progressive policies than the ones that poll well and the ones that the platform is based on won't pass, but your more progressive policy will pass for some reason. Why is that? Wait, I didn't say that. Wait, I don't wait, think you, you seem to have this He just of... doesn't want anything politically effective to come. Wait, he just wants to bitch and no, moan no, no, that nothing's like happening this... and no one's far left enough. There's and this nothing's really funny happen. thing. So far, it seems that way. Hold but on. There's I'll this get... Wait, hold on. There's like this really funny thing that oh. happens where it's like you think that like the more left it is, the more hard it is to sell. That's not always true. Um, there are some things that sell incredibly well that are far left that sell just as well um, to people uh, like for many economic things would sell well to even even people on the right can, can you name some yeah absolutely like massive increased union membership if it like you can sell that to a lot of people if you actually go in and tell people hey we want to get you workplace protections absolutely um expansion yeah, and then you know what happens there's oh, fewer right, jobs that right, <laughs> give me a second here you can have a, a whole bunch of policies like this the green new deal is one that you could absolutely sell to more than just dems and you should be shooting high our party shoots low because they're scared of getting of like republicans getting mad at them when if anything if they're going to get shot down no matter what you should push as high as you possibly can you should try to sa sell as high as you possibly can this is literally like a level one sales tactic that like i knew from fucking it's working negotiation so 101 yeah it's negotiation 101 you don't fucking undercut yourself for no reason and they do it all the time and this is something i mean the best one of the best examples of this where i think that um that Biden could do a whole lot better is fucking embracing the Green New Deal. His Biden plan, sure, it's good, but why the fuck settle for less when we know we're on the brink of collapse? We have to push hard for that. Not only would it be amazing, but it would sell great to the absolutely bipartisan uh, population of people in this country who are without a job now, thanks to COVID, who are probably going to be out of a job through the entire winter, a winter that's going to be very hard. Absolutely. Biden could be selling all of these things. There's a hundred policies he could be pushing on. He could be very loud in support of trans of, of trans health care, something that he isn't. He's not particularly loud about that, but it would sell really, really well to all the progressives in this country, which you all admitted most people in the country are at least somewhat progressive. But he doesn't need to win the progressive vote. He needs to win the centrist vote. How many yes. progressives are there? There's, Wait, what, 60,000 people? He doesn't 
need to win the progressive vote. He doesn't need to win the centrist vote. It's the centrists always are going to vote for him unless they're Republicans. And at that point, you're never going to bring them over. You can't just bring random Republicans over. There's a cult of Trump. Are you kidding me? You didn't have all sorts of people come over from the Republican Party. John Kasich didn't get a huge speaking part. No, I'm sorry. sorry. Can we stop pretending that 2008 did not happen? Uh, How did Barack Obama? You you know what 2008 happened? How did Barack Obama win against Hillary Clinton? He promised universal health care. He promised to walk. He he literally said, I'm going to put on my walking shoes to get card check passed. Dude, I'm, I'm assuming you all know what card check is. Card check makes unionization easier. Those were popular positions. And guess what? He won a blowout victory. And he, you know, and it wasn't didn't do anything with it. But... <laughs> Guess what? The, the mandate from the mandate from his thing was to get Obamacare well, passed. Guess what? Guess what, Rage? That actually goes to my point earlier that politicians are a package deal. You can have an unpopular opinion. If we take your word for it, then yeah, someone like Barack Obama can have an unpopular position. And yeah, still but why would you make it harder out, for yourself to win? Wait, you're not going victory. to make it harder to yourself. The biggest problem that we have here in the United States is fucking turnout. That's our problem. The Democrats outnumber the Republicans, like massively, like two to one. We totally win. It's turnout that's a problem. It's turnout and it's suppression that are problems. And both of those things have nothing to do with uh, whether you're selling too far left. Left policies sell really great in the Democratic Party. It's having the courage to actually say them in disobedience of corporate donors, which is where things get really messy. You see, but that's the thing. If you push for this, you could win the party and win the vote, but you also have to be willing to commit to playing hard against the Republicans. Meanwhile, the Republicans are running fucking rampant, like a fucking, I don't even know, like a stampede over voting rights in this country, a stampede over our ability to actually participate in a democratic election. And the Democrats are just like, well, we need to make sure we win over those purple state voters. And it's like, no, what the fuck? We have more people. We need to ensure turnout. We need to ensure mobilization. We need to energize by selling things to the base that they actually fucking care about. There's a million fucking working people in this country who really want to get out there and support, but their party doesn't give them anything. And so, of course, they're not going to feel motivated towards that. Are you kidding me? We win in numbers. We just have to actually use those numbers. And so far, the Democrats have stood back and said, nah, I'm just going to play with whatever. I'm just going to fucking, we're going to, it'll be returned to normal. That's going to be what we're going to run with. And that is because, again, that is because... The uh, the Republican Party represents a unified ideological front. They have that. The Democratic Party does not. You have your policies, and I agree. Those would be great policies. There's a number of policies I would love to see happen. But that does not make a unified ideological front in the same way that the Republicans have. And the Democratic Party just frankly does not have it. Yes, we want to push things further to the left. We want to see things change. Um, I think there's good organizations out there. Our Revolution, P Triple C. Oh you guys um, talk so long. Okay, first off, do you guys think uh, that every right wing person is a fascist? Yeah, no. I actually wanted to ask that. Like, Demon, no. have you? Do you no, actually I know mean, any I, Republicans? I mean, ideological right that supposedly exists. Wait, are you? I think the wait, people wait, hold on in power represent an ideological front the people in power on the republican side represent yeah, an ideological that, like, front elaborate. that is different from people on elaborate the is what i'm saying wait wait hold on wait are you um like wait wait so what's the question the question here is that whether is whether the right um represents in the, in the united states whether the right has like an actual ideological front the right, which has been literally chained Jerry, to evangelical do you know what the vote? Federalist Society is? No, you're not going to ask me five questions. You said something about I'm 10 asking seconds. you one question. I asked you, do you know what the Federalist Society is? What is this idealistic combination of right-wing people that represents the entire right? What is it? Donald Explain, Trump. elaborate. Donald Trump is the perfect okay. representation right now. They've built a, a complete personality you know culture on Donald Federalist Trump. Federalist Society is? Trump, that's your answer. No, that's it. That's the current. That's the current avatar of it. This is what they do. They build up. They build up. Avatar of what? 
Of wait, what? Of the, wait, what do you mean of what? Of the right? Of I mean, the right we, we can just skip this line of questioning. We can just go back to leftist historical revisionism, wait, where they said Obama what? was to the left of Hillary during oh the primary, God, when Hillary was clearly the most progressive candidate about right now. What no, the I fuck are you talking about? Rage, Ray, uh, I want to stick to this. Derry, do you know what the Federalist Society I, I'm is? I'm not going to answer any question until you answer mine. You said this I'm, thing I'm, a dozen just, times. I'm answering your question with a question. Do you know what the Federalist Society is? I'm so confused to answer it without asking a question. Wait, wait, I just tried to answer yeah. your, your question. Like, do you want me to explain how, like... So wait, is the answer federalism? Wait, 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 hold on a second. Do we know wait, wait, who wait, the Illuminati is? Well, I know, listen. We, I'm going to take that as that? a no, because you just said, is the answer federalism? Because that was my question, and that you was your... You need to... So if I took... To look up, up, on a little note go, go, go to Google. Go to Google. Go to Google.com. Interpret it as the Federalist Society. Look up the Federalist Society. Go to Google.com. Look up ideology and look up what the word united means because you're implying that everybody on the right yes, has the it's, ideology uh, and is united and you can't answer what that is and your only response is federalism. That's it. No. So far, that's well, it. Wait, that's your on. whole answer. Hold on a second. Listen. Hold on. Okay. Let's, just, let's true, just rewind a second. I mean, we, if, if federalism is, what's, is what Shadows? unites the right, then how the Shadows? fuck did Trump get elected? Because he is not a federalist. Shadows? Wait. Do you know Shadows. who Scientologists are? Oh my, oh my god. Shadows. Yeah? I'm just gonna say right now, Derry is... Look, Derry needs to look up a term. And you should look it up yourself. It's called the Federalist Society. Yeah, you really can't familiar that. with Federalist You should look those up. Society. It's not federalism. It's a particular organization. You should look it up. It's actually really useful for conversations. Like, do your own really, research, guys. There is listen, a side listen, of communism. There. Hold on a second. Listen, listen your guys' spat is getting work, annoying. Okay? Listen, I've been asked a question, and I tried to answer it, and you two are fucking pissing, having a pissing contest. Time, came up. Listen, I don't fucking give All a right, shit so, about this stupid posture. Let me, Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Okay? <laughs> I, can, I can explain a, a lot of how right-wing politics in the United States work. Okay? I grew up in a fucking hardcore right-wing family. I know this shit, all right? Listen, we, we have a enormous faction of evangelical Christians who literally believe that they want to push for something akin to a, a theocracy. You understand? Those people got in behind Donald Trump because Donald Trump represents the Republicans, which are not the liberals, which are not the commie libs. So they line up behind whoever comes up at the end of the day. All of the different tiny, like slightly different factions on the right, they squabble internally. And then when it's time to come together, they go behind with an, an unbelievable fervor that we've seen here with the, the and, and Mag, MAGA has taken it to a new degree, a new level of cult of personality. But this sh shit happened with Bush. Bush, this shit happened with Reagan. It happens with every fucking Republican. They so all you're saying, fall in line. Now, so you're saying incrementalism is wait, great wait, wait and a doing minute. a lot of things. Listen to me. You have to actually let me fucking finish. Because to me, it seems just absolutely bonkers to come into this conversation and act as though the right wing doesn't have an incredible amount of ideological uh ideological adherence that they have to go to take a look at how donald trump has had to has had to ad adopt the evangelical christian vote he had to put mike pence on his staff a hardcore evangelical to even win them over now they'll go behind him even though he's a a a, by their standards, he's a disgusting, venal sinner. But they're going to fall mm -hmm. behind him because he's fighting for them. And what he's fighting for is anti-abortion, anti-gay. He's pushing all these fronts. You have to look, when you're thinking about the right, you have to look at the most extreme elements of the right, the ones who are garnering the power, and those are the ones that they fall behind. Because the right wing works on hierarchical power. This is how they've always done it in the United States. It's the entire story of the history of the fucking Republican Party. They've been doing this. They fucking dominate the airways, and they... Okay, okay, hold on again. Wait, you can't, oh hold my on. God, this is so like, dumb. Just to follow that up. Because no, 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 hold on, hold on. I actually... Let's hear from the libs, sorry. Let's hear from the libs. 5% to 95% talk ratio in this conversation. It's fantastic. Okay, I, I, I actually need to follow up on that because I actually disagree with you need to be the most extreme. But I would like to say that KFC's idea of like, you know, there is a unified ideological front. That is true. But the reason why is because there are different factions within the Republican Party oh, who have their single oh, issue. Oh, get away with okay? that. You know, you have the evangelicals with their abortion and the LGBT. You have the pro-gun people. You have the economics people. You have the immigration people. This is why you have a unified ideological front, because you have these different factions well, within the Republican Party who are 
just, mostly just, just, hold on. So please hold on. let him finish. Hold on. Um, you have these people who are basically, if not just straight up single issue voters, who care about these issues. And this if you have the RNC, if the RNC platform has all of these part of it, that's how you get this unified ideological front. This is what KFC is actually getting to. And I agree with his point of there's a unified ideological front. But the reason why is that's why, because you have all these factions. And just to just to jump off of what Demon Mama was saying earlier, the reason I brought up the Federalist Society, the Federalist Society is not the concept of federalism. It's an actual organization. It's funded by the tune of $25 million a year uh, by organizations like the Koch brothers, by... Oh, my God. Uh, Why do you think $25 million is enough to change the political power of the country? What are you talking Here's about? Here's why. Here's why. 25, I'm actually, oh, I've gotten, I've, I actually have an answer to your question, Darren. You can buy the United States for $25 million. Holy wow. Here's why. I've actually Damn. got an answer Malibs, to your Malibs question. Malibs getting mad. Holy shit. Darry, I've got an answer to your question. Because when Supreme Gary Court getting nominees pissed. come up, this has been the an interesting Federalist Society I'll, I'll say that much. goes to Donald Lives Trump mad. and they present him with a list. They did this with George W. Bush. They did this with Reagan. They've been around for several oh years. God. There's a lot of other organizations that go to other politicians and say, here are some lists of people we want nominated. This isn't a conspiracy. Oh There's all sorts God. of people who do this publicly. Wait, who said anything about a conspiracy? You do realize that... Um, it's not the a conspiracy theory. The idea it's that, out no, there it's the not. Yeah, There's all the sorts of other people who do it too. Does it mean that all of these people wait, are influencing wait, wait, all these people wait, and they're wait, all getting the exact wait, pick they want? No. no. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Listen. Listen. I want you to think about things for a second. Did you know that it's possible that people produce a list and then they don't get listened to. Well, guess what? That's not what happens on the right. We have evidence of this. That's what you do. You look yeah, can, at- Can you show Can you show some oh, of this evidence absolutely. that like, they're specifically wait, choosing wait, off of the right Federalist now, wait, list only? You want, me to, you want me to just go completely into, why don't, here, here's an example. Here's something Brett that's Kavanaugh. really great. The, yeah, well, Brett Kavanaugh is a great example. That's a great one. But no, another one, no. let's talk about the, uh, let's talk about the literal policy that's written by the Heritage no, Foundation. Such. Uh, the Heritage Foundation is a, a think tank that Maybe will literally hand. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All of these picks were literally course, recommended wait, by the Heritage Foundation would... and other groups. Like these right wing right, groups because... are, have a huge amount of influence. You're just literally ig ignoring actual fact. And that's why okay. it becomes hard to educate you entirely on this one. When I can say, if I was, for example, if this was my stream and it was a solo stream, I'd say, hey, everyone, today we're going to learn about the Heritage Foundation. We're going to talk about how they actually go into it, but we can't do it's that. It's almost as if all these organizations choose people whose beliefs represent what they believe is well and so they just happen to be choosing the same person they're not literally going out there and saying we're making this guy the head of it it's hey this person has beliefs that we want so or, we're pushing this or, the same or, way that you push everything maybe, else or maybe this isn't some this. grand conspiracy wait, that they're wait, just choosing the next person a grand conspiracy? Conspiracy? what the like, fuck are you even yeah. talking about you're literally just talking out your ass conspiracy. right now nobody has said anything about a grand conspiracy the only difference is that we've said is that the right is more ideologically consistent with one another than the left is and there's a number of reasons for that i could i could elaborate no no no, no, no. you didn't say more you didn't say more you said okay, the entire okay. right wing is an ideological front. They do. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing contradictory about that's that. That's not more. That's a whole different. Wait, story no, that isn't. Okay, you're literally okay, making. Okay, you're making a stupid okay, argument okay, here. Okay. Okay. This is a stupid ass argument. Literally, just semantics. Whoa, guys, guys. It's, it's the end of the show. Come on. Let's let's just settle down. Oh my right. god! I didn't get like one fucking discussion point. Holy shit! Right, wasted your time. Sucks. Sucks to be a lib. give us your last piece, Derry, because I feel like you didn't speak that much. So. A platform isn't an ideological front. If the left has a bunch of policies they agree on, like healthcare, criminal justice, the economy, education, immigration, if that is your standard, which is how you kind of vaguely define the right, but shittily, then there's an ideological front on the left, just like there's an ideological front on the right. And it makes ideology incorrect, but it's how you use it. And it doesn't make any fucking sense at all. Um, so with Sanders and Biden combine their platforms what? together, one that's moderate and one that's what? progressive, they Word become the like ideological front. You could say there's two ideologies. Just, again, we're using this vague sense of platforms that are, are agreed on, so it's an ideological front. In that case, there's two working together, and that's why the left is pulling very, very well because they're combined in their ideological platform, and it looks very good for Trump uh, to be losing. So... I, I don't. I mean, know that's it. I, I don't know what this. Do you have a brief retort to that, yeah. Demon Mama? 
Um, the brief one? Yeah, I don't even know what any of that meant. That sounded like literal word salad to me. I have no It's really hard to keep up with like 10 minutes of conversation. Yeah, it's really hard to minutes. keep up with random words that aren't don't seem to be jo jointed together. It's really weird. I, I asked straight questions you couldn't answer. What do you mean? Wait, wait, okay, wait, wait. Okay, okay, we're done yet. <laughs> right, okay. So, Dario, I'll, 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 basically now everyone gets a chance to show themselves one more time and then that's it. So, uh, Dari, have you got anything you want to share? Yeah. Um, shill oh just that's where i'm at um dairy coey on everything i'm a social democrat um I, I i think we were supposed to come in as like a libs or something to argue against communism i don't know how much of a meme it was actually going to be um but yeah as you know as you can see communism it never gets anything done um but i mean biden's gonna win regardless okay unless um, he doesn't unless uh, he doesn't next up uh we'll go to shadows yeah, so um, I'm Shadows of Libs Liberty. Blown the fuck out. Um, I am a neolib. Um, I just want to give a sh quick Libs shout out to my boy Dylan Burns TV for mm. adding me to this and um, having me come on because uh, uh, I'm not sure if I appreciated it. Clearly, a lot of Dean's uh, brain cells were killed um, by uh, KFC and Demon Mama, but to be fair to them, they were not nearly as bad as Dr. K, who made me literally want to hang myself in the middle of the stream. So, Whoa. you know, I will say that again. actually, I will say that actually, you know, um, I had a pr pretty good conversation with uh, these two. Um, I also like Derry and uh, Rage Pope. You guys seem pretty chill. Monka but uh, yeah, so um, I'm a neolib who believes in capitalism and freedom. So if you like that stuff, you might want to check me out. If you like Bastier, I would definitely recommend you come over to my channel and check me out because we have a lot in common. I don't know what the fuck. Uh, I'm yeah, I hope you all have a good day. Hey, take care. Uh, okay, Demon Mama. Yeah, my name is Demon Mama. I talk about uh, forward thinking paths for our, our political future here. Um, you can follow me over at uh, Demon Mama Live on Twitch or Your Demon Mama on Twitter. I like to talk about a whole lot of stuff. We do some video games. We do a whole bunch of politics, debates, fun as fuck. Um, yeah, so come hang out. I'm going to be doing a politics stream after this. So if you're looking for something to watch, come on and hang out. You can pick my brain. Um, yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me, Chad. No worries. Um, okay, hey, Demon Mama, you want to BS yeah. after this? Sure. So uh, I'd like to thank D Dylan Burns and Chad Logic for uh, bringing me on. Uh, I appreciated uh, a lot of the bad face stuff that I did. Uh, normally, uh, not this bad. Uh, you can find me at twitch.tv slash ragepope. Uh, we talk about uh, a lot of the um, news that's going on in the world. And uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, no worries. And uh, Kentucky Fried Comrade? Uh, yeah, Kentucky Fried Comrade here. Uh, yeah, anybody who's here and hasn't uh, followed This is to... kind of me stretching my muscles out. Uh, again, I forgot to plug the but, YouTube. But uh, you know, follow me on Twitter at Kentucky Fried Comrade, K Y Fried Comrade. Uh, got a got a stream post post revolution. It's fun. Twitch.tv slash post post revolution. We have fun there. Okay, and uh, newbie. Yeah. Uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, some good discussion. Uh, this might be the last one we do. Um, so you might not see me on Chad's channel for a while. So. Uh, Check me out. I've posted my links in chat. Uh, you can follow me. I might start streaming on Twitch uh, soon, maybe. So uh, you can follow me there if you want to see more from me. Great. Okay. Thanks very much for coming on, everyone. Thanks for having the conversation. Uh, and um, yeah, I'll sure I'll speak to you all soon. Oh, I, I just want to say real quick. Sorry for harassing you to bringing me on this chat. <laughs> no, no, no. It's it's fine. It worked in quite well with what was going on because it was supposed to be a bunch of libs versus demon mama, but then it. The tables turned in the end. <laughs> yeah, Dylan rigged it and we uh, fixed it. Basically. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay.